Stream's up. Stream me. Yep, I am. Okay. So let me see uh, what the last chat bug. Yeah, that that we're right where Zalara disappeared. Um, I want I want to make the uh, the music the sound. So it's at night. There's still uh, turmoil in the city, but it's died down a little bit. And figure out one thing and then we start. So because the the, uh, the city is in anarchy, it has a different stat block 
and this stat block uh, chain. I wonder if I can share with you. Let me see. Let me take a look at the rules. Uh, What happens if I give you this on Discord? No, it doesn't work. Let's see, uh, delete message, delete. Right. Um, you can get uh, the settlement rules on Discord. I put the link there. And you can take a look at them while I figure something out. So would Corvosa be a metropolis? Oh, uh, I'll tell you in a sec. No problem. So Corvosa is a large city, it says here. Um, so according to these rules, it's just under Metropolis. I think Metropolis is Opara, the city the other guys are in. Let me see, I want to check that just to be sure. Yeah. Opara has 100,000 people, 100,010 people. Yours has 18,000 people. 
see a difference it's almost 10 times as big uh because this city is as you know it's the biggest city in uh, Varizia, but Varizia is a frontier um region it's not uh, you know it's a new region right. it's not very old so as far as the Varizians are concerned this is as big as it gets but you know it gets bigger yeah and then uh i think how big is uh i want to check how big is um Absalom. Absalom is 300,000, so it's three times bigger than Ampara. So, um, one thing that, uh, so as you can see, depending on the, um, later down, the settlement modifiers, corruption, crime, economy, low, lower society. So every time, now because the city is in anarchy, these um, these numbers are different than they were like yesterday. And as you can see, um, for example, uh, the crime modifier modifies the sense motive checks or blood checks, slate of hand checks. Economy modifier modifies craft or form profession. So I thought that the economy modifier would modify, for example, the prices of items, but it doesn't seem so. Craft. So, you know, uh, you haven't rolled craft, you haven't rolled perform or profession. So the economy doesn't seem to play a role. I would think that in anarchy, things would be more expensive, for example. Um, so read the rules while I make 100% sure about that, because you, you, you know, you guys were asking about appraisal and all that stuff. So I just want to make sure before we start. Oh, there's another thing I wanted to do. Yeah, let's do that now. Oh, let's do that now. So, I have an image. Wait, maybe I'll already give it to you. There's an image, a 3D image of Corvosa, what it looks like. I'm going to check in your images. Oh, I'm categorized. No. No, I haven't given it to you, so I'm going to give it to you now. So you can look at it while... Uh... Where is it though? I had it. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. This is going to be the Corvosa Panorama.
Alright, so I said it to all of you. So, uh, you're supposed to uh, recite, it's, it's uh, long, so you're supposed to um, um, extend it in length, and then uh, you right click on it, and then you click view, and then uh, zoom to fit, I think it is, and then you close the border so that it looks good, and then you want to keep that somewhere on the screen at all times. We should have done it this last, last sessions as well. Uh, I don't know if I've told you about this, I've told the other guys. We're trying to make the screen as interesting as possible, as many graphics, etc. Not just like the map. So when you have additional, you know, obviously characters, monsters and all that. But also, uh, you know, a 3D view of the city is great to have at all times. And um, let me see, when you have it, let me see. After you fix it, I'll show you something about it. How do I zoom to um, Yeah, uh, so here, the map of Corvosa should always be in the background. So you'd always want to uh, pin it to the desktop with the arrow. Uh, you don't want to have it as a separate um, window. Yeah, it did. Uh, it vanished when you sent us that new thing. I'm fixing it now. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me see, for example. Yeah. Um, well, Signal has it the way I would like it. Um, Dynapok is working on it. Kirog is working on it. Saf is working on it. Uh, so how do I make it zoom or fit? Um, how do you make? Right click on the image. Yeah. On the image. Oh, there it on is. On the actual yeah. image. Yeah. Okay. View and then zoom to. I think it's zoom to fit. I think. I use zoom to fill. Is it zoom to fill? Is it better? Okay, because I need to know. Try zoom to fill. Uh, what What is the difference? Um. So if you do to fit, you end up with bars at the top. Because it will always make sure it fits inside the window. Whereas oh, fill, it'll start, it'll start out overflowing, but then you resize the window, and you should be able to get the whole image. Yeah, the problem with the you know what there's a problem with that because when he resizes the window, it crops the image, and now you've lost the image, Dino. Yeah, I accidentally <laughs> closed it. We don't Sorry. want to lose the image, and um, I see something uh, on the map on your map. Why do you have? Why do you have a little oh, circle what is that? next? What is that? Corvosa Panorama. Right, right click on it. I don't know what that is in your screen. Just Dino. I don't think anybody else has this. No. Close window. Click and close window. Okay. Now, uh, images. Uh, at the top where it says all? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, you can also do it like this, I guess. You can also, yeah, you can do it like that. Just do whatever you need to do. Yeah, and categorize. Yeah, for also. Alright, let's try it again. Can you send me and, the panorama again? Uh, no, it's better if you guys learn to find the stuff. Go to images. And just type Corvosa. Uh, Dino, don't put the panorama in the middle of the image, you know, in the middle of the desktop. Put it on, uh, you know, on the bottom, for example. Other people put it at the top. You can put it at the bottom if you want. Um, yeah, put it there. And then you can move the map exactly, exactly. So let me see if everybody's got it. Safa's got it there. My signal has it. Uh... Yeah. For example, Saf has the whole image, like he has the the whole and the surroundings, but Dino has it cropped. So let's try to get the whole image, uh, the whole you know, and the surroundings, Dino. Uh, I think that's why you should use, use uh, zoom to fit. Try you try zoom to fit. And yes, toggle the toolbar exactly. Uh, here.
So that's right, the dino, you just need to, exactly, that's perfect. And once everybody has it, So, Saf is good, Kirog is good, although you could make the border smaller. Just shrink the border so that it doesn't know. Uh, manually, you just have to do it manually. Dino's good. Alright, so now everybody look there and I'll show you where you are. I'll show you what uh, have been happening all this time. It would have been much useful if we had done this in the beginning. So, uh, Kirok's house, oops, that's the wrong map. Kirok's house is somewhere here. Wait, somewhere, somewhere there, I think. And the pier that you were before is somewhere here. Shouldn't it be to the left of the bridge, the house? No, because uh, it's right sided. It's new looking. It, uh, it, yeah, I think this way is north. Little... This way is north. Ah. Yeah, I think the arrow was a little too far to the right, but it's close. Uh, yeah, the the arrow. Okay, look, can you look where I'm moving it now? Like it's not pixel perfect. The um, I cannot choose exactly where to place it. The arrows in the general, I'm just saying this is the neighborhood. This is the, uh, that you're in. I mean, that, no, not that you're in right now, where, that, where Caleb's house is, Caleb's lodgings. Um, the, uh, the pier, the old fishery is somewhere around there. And now you're, uh, wait. And now you're somewhere in the middle. This is about where Zalara's place is. For example, this is the region where um, where signals uh, lodgings are. And note, this is the castle. This is a palace. Can you see the the pyramid thingy right back there? Yeah. And this is the area that's the um, you see how um, I think it's called the heights. Um, let me see what it's called. Yeah, it's the heights. It's the heights. It's the heights. And the academy is... Uh, let's see the academy. Is it behind the heights, I think? Is it not on top of the heights? It's on the, the, it's on the top, yeah. It's on top, you're right. So... That's going to be the academy. So it makes a huge difference when you see it. And all Corvosa is here. Oh, is it? I'm mistaken. By the way, you have if you go to your images, you have another map that's called Districts of Corvosa. Yeah, all, all Corvosa is there. So the districts is helpful because, for example, okay, let's bring this map up so you can you can see some other stuff. Uh, so this is where um, Caleb's lodging is somewhere around there. This where it says Citadel Volshinianek here, that's the city guard. So the city guard, the citadel here, is a city guard. Uh, and you can see it on the other map as well. So the citadel is really, uh, the city guard is really very close to, to Kirok's place. It's just like, um, you know, five, ten minutes walk or something like that. Um, and you can keep this map up. So you, I mean, I guess, I guess you could have, uh, could you have all three maps at the same time? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe you could have, maybe you could have the, uh, <clears throat> the districts uh, in a, uh, in a small, try that. Try try to see if you can also have the districts now. In like a small. Uh... Yeah, and you don't. It doesn't have to. Not all the like. For example, I see uh, Sap now. He's putting the districts on top of a little bit on the side of the. That's okay. Like you cannot have everything, you know, uh, visible at all. Well, actually, Kiro has managed it. Kiro has managed. Uh, 
Yeah, Every, yeah. Everybody with his own, you know, the screens definitely should not look identical. Everybody seems to have managed it. And now, you know, it's you get a better, you get a better, uh, a more a busier screen, and also for the uh, for the viewers and for us. And I plan to take screenshots later, and these screenshots. I'm going to be posting them with every session of the forum. So, it will, you know, that will show up on the front page. Another reason I want them to uh, look good. Okay. This looks good. So, I'm going to leave you to it for a sec. Just to finish something that I need to. And then we're back. Yeah, before I'd seen the panorama, I thought the city was relatively flat. Exactly, like exactly. Exactly, it's mm. so it's not flat at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be back in five, guys. Just getting your phone call. Okay. I'll be back in five. Get some water. All right. Oh, okay, I can't have something to sell you, but I'll wait until Kiro gets back as well. All right, I'm back. All right. So I was saying that, uh, for example, there is the um, <clears throat> the danger uh, rating for the for the settlements, and um, so Corposa has a certain danger rating. I'm not going to be giving you these numbers. Uh, you're going to have to use knowledge checks to find out numbers and stuff like that. But uh, Corposa, in general, because it's a frontier city, it definitely has a bit more danger, a higher danger rating than more civilized cities. Put it that way. But in the anarchy phase that we are now, that danger rating rises. Um, it's actually three times higher, the danger ratings now, than it was yesterday in your city. Um, so what does that number do? What's yeah, I can say in the what? rules you sent that 
Um, in an anarchic city, danger is like plus 20. I, I don't know what that means. Exactly. That's exactly what it is now. It's 20 higher than it was. I'll explain to yes. you what the, that is. Um, there is a percentile dice for a random encounter every day in Corvosa. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about that. I'll tell you why I'm confused about that. Because it says... Everyone back? It's... Yeah, are you back? Did you just come back? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um... I was explaining was explaining the anarchy rating for the cities. Yeah. Uh, the danger, sorry, the danger rating for the cities. So Corvosa has a certain danger rating, and it, when it's an anarchy, though, that danger rating increases by twenty. Um, so that's you know, right now it's three times more dangerous in the city than it was yesterday. Oh. Uh, and the question is, what exactly does that uh, number uh, modify? And. Uh, it modifies the random encounters. So um, every day I'm supposed to roll some dice to figure out if you guys get uh, jumped, basically. And uh, this changes the, with um, different districts of the city. It changes outside the city and different areas, uh, regions outside the city, north, south, or whatever. Um, the problem that I have is that the rules say... Um, I'm not going to give you numbers, but I'm going to tell you what it says here. It says that uh, there is a, a certain percentage of chance of encounter during a day of travel or a night of rest. So, the question is, if you sleep in your lodgings, what a fucking dragon, like if I, I can roll a dragon to come into your lodgings at night? That's what I don't understand. You see what I'm saying? Um, I, mean, I can understand it. Right? Yes, but see, see. first you roll, the, uh, it's a certain percent, it could be 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, I'm going to tell you the number, but that's the kind of number that it is, there's a percent. Right, like, so, right. the, the so issue is if you roll and like uh, on the random encounters and it says like a dragon comes comes at us, but we're like safely in our, in our lodgings okay. or whatever. There's, you, there's, two, there's, two, there's two issues. Yeah. First, I roll this percentile to see if you get jumped at all, right? Yeah. Most times you won't get jumped because it's a small number, it's not... 90 percent you know it's around 10 percent yep. it could be 20 30 around there so first i roll that dice and if it says that there is a uh, an encounter then i go to the book at the end of the book where it says uh the different uh areas and uh i roll another dice percentile and that on that dice th that dice is um from zero to 100 again is percentile but hold on a sec um oh, so exactly And on that, I, and and the, uh, in that, in the second uh, table, the lower the number, the easier the enemies. The higher the number, the uh, more dangerous the enemies. Hold on, hold on. What page is this? Page four six four. In my book, four six four. So, for example, I have here Corvo Corvosa Street Encounters, and the number goes. Actually, the number goes from. 1 to 130. You know why it goes up to 130? Because I add the 30 from the Anarchy now. Whereas before, I would have added just Corvosa's base number, but now it's plus 20. Well, anyway, I basically told you now, Corv Corvosa's base danger rating is 10. Um, and I explained to the guys before, the reason it's 10, it's not 0, is because this is a frontier city. It's a big city, but it's still a frontier city, so there's more danger than uh, in cities that are more civilized areas, right? So the base for Corvosa is 10. So whenever I roll for street encounters, I always add 10. But during Anarchy, I add 30. So now when you're going back to, uh, because we probably haven't encountered, that's why I'm telling you all this. I've already rolled. Um, so now I have to add 30. So for example, if I add one, if you roll 1 to 5, it's 1 to 4 Dream Spiders. If you roll 6 to 13, it's 1 to 6 Dire Rats. If it's 14 to 18, but if it's like the highest number, 130, that is some really tough shit. You see what I'm saying? That's some really tough shit. It's actually so tough, it's outside your level. That's that's another thing that, that, that bothers me a bit. So that table, the first uh, one to three entries have CR challenge rating of one. And then the challenge rating is, goes to two, three, four, five, six. And at the highest number, 124 to 130, the challenge rating is 10. So that thing, whatever that thing is, it's going to wipe you out with just a look. So what if I roll that? 
You see what I'm saying? We have the and, option uh, of fleeing, right? Yeah, you're not gonna flee from that thing. <laughs> you're not gonna flee from that thing. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the book does say that um, that it's up to my discretion to have the number. I, I have the number in two if I want. So let's say you roll eighty, which is challenge rating, you know, six. There's no way you can do channel rating. So I, I could have that. So instead of 80, you roll 40, and that will be challenge rating, I don't know, three. But even that is outside your range. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I do. I, I think that they, um, and they've done this in the other campaigns too. They all have this issue. So I think the way it has to do, like I basically keep rolling until I get a challenge rating that is um, uh, logical for you. Uh, I think these tables are, uh, you know, because these 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 books are 600 pages, and they 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 cannot put in the book everything they want. They have to cut some stuff, some corners. And uh, one of the instead of putting for, they would have to put, you know, like 10 different uh, tables for Corvosa for your level. So if you're level one to two, there will be one one uh, table, and then it, well, if you're level two to three, there will be another table. You see what I'm saying? So instead of doing that, they made one table for everything, and they make you roll on that table. But that roll, the second roll, is kind of um, it's kind of meaningless because I have to keep. You know, I cannot. Otherwise, you'd be wiped out in the first random encounter or in the second. It doesn't make any sense. And um, probably if I search the Paiso forums, there, you know, there'll be a thread there explaining that. Um, so the question is, what happens? But it does say in the book that if it's too tough, I can have the number. I can make it into half, right? But what if it's still too tough? What if the number is, you know, because it's not just that I roll. It's that then I have to add 30 to it. So if I roll 50, it's 80. Even 40 is too bad. Right now, like, your challenge, I think the only challenge ratings you can do is uh, maybe challenge rating 2. So it will be a rod swarm. But... The next one up, challenge rating three, is an accuser devil. I don't think you can take that. And that's 22 to 26. Basically, with a plus 30, that's the crazy thing. With a plus 30 that I have to add to that roll now, the lowest you're going to get is challenge rating three. Which is 1d4 feral riding dogs. Uh... I, the thing is, I don't know how the challenge rating works. <laughs> so what does challenge rating 3 mean? Does it mean that you can take it on or you can't? Uh, I think you can just about... It all depends because it's just 1d4 feral riding dogs. If it's just one dog or two, maybe you can take it. But if it's 3 or 4, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's just so much randomness built into this. Uh, moreover, I'm supposed to be rolling these dice every day. So what if you're coming back home from a battle and you're fucked? And then I roll the encounter. So that's all that I've been puzzling over for the last um, um, for the last few sessions. Uh, I rolled um, the first day when you were sleeping in the hold of the ship. I rolled 52. So uh, the chance of uh, a random encounter in Corvosa says here is 20%. That chance is the same apparently uh, regardless of state of the city or whatever. So the first night you roll 52 so no encounter. For the day, for the next day, when you um, woke up and you walked back to your uh, to the lodgings, you roll 95, which again, you know, is not 20%. So again, no problem. But for the night, for uh, the night, um, okay, I was I wasn't supposed to say it to you now. Yeah, anyway, um, you roll four. So there's definitely going to be an encounter in the night. Keep in mind, keep another thing in mind that just because there's an encounter in the night. The book doesn't tell me where or when or how. I have to decide. So what I have decided is that it will happen on the way back to, um, to your logic now. It makes the most sense. Um, so you're so all four. I, Go ahead. I think the um, challenge rating, the way it works is it's based on the like average player level. So like challenge rating three would be like uh, like a medium level difficulty for a party of average level three. For example, I see. there's so probably something in the book that yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check a, that. Like I'm, a, just, I'm gonna yeah. check that in a sec because I need to know this. Uh, you know, before I didn't need to know this because before I wasn't making any decisions. The, the game was telling yep. me where the enemies were, but now I have to make the decision about that table because it's subjective. You know, I have to. 
So I have to know what the CR is. I finally have to learn this. Uh, yeah. But I'm telling you now, uh, well, look, because I told you that there's a random encounter now, you cannot tell me, okay, we're going to sleep in this. In this uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, even if you say we're going to sleep here, I think the way I understand it is that they can still jump you in here. Like, it doesn't tell me that you're safe, unless it makes no sense. Let's say you're sleeping in the city guard's prison, for example. Obviously, nothing can jump you in there. But unless there's something crazy like that, then they can jump you anywhere. Maybe, for example, I roll dogs and the dogs just barge in the house. Unless you, I don't know, if you lock the door, then how will the dogs... See, that's the thing, like, I don't know. What, I, maybe the Game Master's Guide explains this stuff. I haven't read all of it. Keep in mind, the reason that I haven't, uh, you know, what kind of Game Master are you if you haven't read the Game Master's Guide? But keep in mind that I'm running four campaigns, and the number one priority for me is to know the campaigns. That's what I've spent most of my time, you know, uh, reading. And so I haven't done that much by, and I'm basically using my knowledge of second edition D&D to, uh, to basically, you know, coast through. Uh, as much as I can, but as I'm finding out, this is so much more. Like, there's even rules for how you call the city guard with roles. Whereas in D and D, you know, second edition, I just decide how long the guard takes. So, um, anyway, the the thing that I re had to figure out is that when I roll the random encounter, is there's a twenty percent chance, uh, and it says during a day of travel or a night of like even from the beginning, I still have a trouble. It says during a day of travel or a night of rest. Does it count as a day of travel if you're just walking around the city in the middle of the day? So what, you're going to walk around the city and a dragon's going to attack you in the middle of the fucking city in the, in the broad daylight if I roll a high uh, roll? You see what I'm saying? So uh, I don't have, I do not have, um, I, what I'm going to do is basically, I'm going to stick to the rules as much as possible unless the rules create an illogical situation. If it makes a, an illogical situation, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use my judgment to make the situation logical, uh, which might involve even just, you know, throwing the die away or re-rolling the dice. I could just keep yeah. re-rolling and get a, um, until I get a situation that's logical. Um, of course, I could always just choose what I, what enemy attacks you, right? But I don't want to do that. I would rather, I would rather the dice decide. But if the dice gives me something that's stupid, I'm not going to do it, obviously. And uh, I'm sure that they explained that somewhere on pa the Paiso forum or whatever, but I just haven't found it or haven't have, I had the time to find it. So, for tonight, you roll the four. Four means 100% you get a random encounter. Uh, then I have to roll another die. Hold on. Uh, RPG dice roller. I need to open it in another window. Okay. Um, so, let me roll. Number of sins, a hundred. A hundred, and then it says modifier to add plus 30. So I'm rolling a hundred, a one day hundred plus 30. Yes, and you rolled, you rolled 94. So it's very high, you know, I'll tell you when it is, 94. Reverse string encounters, 94, it's uh, 88 to 97. Hold on, this is actually very interesting. What you roll is very interesting. Page 86. Okay. Yeah. It's something that doesn't make sense. Uh, because, because this table has been uh, created uh, for the entire campaign. Uh, the higher numbers are made for later chapters, basically. Uh, but the way the rules are, it means you can roll for later. Ch it doesn't make any sense now. Like, uh, I, I can't explain to you why it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I, sense. I, I get it. There should be, like, if, if it was like a... Every stage, like every a, stage of the game, every there chapter. There should be a different table. table, yeah. It is. But yeah. they haven't. They have put only one table. So now that I've like rolled... It'd be uh, like, yeah, like old D&D &D adventure paths, you know, for levels 1 to 3, there'd be a table, and then for, like, levels 4 exactly, to 6, there'd be a different exactly. table. But exactly. here it's just one table for the whole city. So now he tells me uh, 94 divided by 2, right? Uh, so that's 45, 47. So let me see now what... It, it does give me... I'll, I'll read to you exactly what it says. Uh, all of these tables are built so that the more dangerous encounters occur at the higher end of the number range. So if you wish to skew encounters to be less dangerous, as makes sense when Corvosa streets are not plagued with uh, 
uh, riot, uh, blah, blah, blah. Feel free to have the result of any role before consulting the table. So uh, I'm going to have the result. So it's 94 divided by uh, 2 is uh, 47. Now let's see what comes up. Is that going to make sense? 47. Okay, 47 does make sense. Um, does make sense. It's challenge rating 3 though. But the way that I understand is, look, this, this is 1d8 enemies. I'm not going to tell you what the enemy is, but it's 1d8, right? And it's a challenge rating 3. But if I roll 1, how is it the same challenge rating if I roll 8? I mean, if it's one uh, if it's one enemy of this sort, I think you can take him on easily, right? But if it's 8... If it's 8, yeah, I think we'd get absolutely, like, annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> you see eight enemies of two. so so hold on a sec i'm gonna roll these dice too it says 1d8 let me let's roll this too um boom i rolled three so you're gonna get three of these and uh, i'll check this style let me check this style it's npc codex 144 so it's not in any like it's another book that you have to you have to buy thankfully i have all the rule books uh, I spent two thousand dollars getting all the rule books. So let's check. And we, that means I have the token. I have everything. Uh, it's 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 good money. It's good money spent. So is it NPCs? Uh, this is it. Let me see. NPC Codex page one four four. NPC codex, yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, hit points, not too bad. AC, decent. Attack. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to play this battle. And uh, the kind of enemy uh, that I rolled would even get you in this house if you <laughs> barricaded yourself in here. So it's just, you know, um, I have to reveal to you these mechanics because, I mean, I guess I could have spent, but, you know, the stuff that uh, Sap says is, is helping me. And plus, I had to do all the, I had to do a ton of other stuff, you see. So I left this for the last moment. I, think, I thought it would be easy. It's not easy. So you're thinking that challenge rating three is for a party of level three. That would make sense, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's probably, yeah, if it's similar to how it was since like, yeah, D&D, third edition, um, there's probably a section in, in the game mastering about like building encounters or like how to balance You know what, in Pathfinder, in the game mastery guide in Pathfinder was released a couple of years after the Cold Rule book. So in Pathfinder, okay. um, the, I think that rule would be in the Core Rule book. Um, yeah, it'd be, it, there might be a section in the core, core rule book for. Um... Let's look for it. Can you help me look for it? Let's look for it yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. We may as well find uh, it. 397, I think. Okay. 397, you say. Let's check. Building encounters. Table twelve one. Average party level. I see. I see. If your average party level is the same as the so now your average party level is minus one. Is APL minus one. Average party level. Sorry, plus one. Because your average partial level now is is about slightly slow, lower than two, right? It's about two, let's say. Yeah. It's, it's like one point nine. Whereas the uh, so, yeah, it's almost hard. But keep in mind that um, you, I only rolled a three, so I didn't roll an eight. I think that makes a huge difference in the uh, in the CR, like how many I roll when it gives me a, because not all these encounters are random. So for example. If you had rolled a uh, hundred three, it would be one Arrhenius. I don't know what the Arrhenius is. It must be really good. It's challenge rating, but it's just one of them, right? Um, but 
For what do you roll? Is yeah. one d8. If you um, yeah, if you scroll down, um, there's a table for CR equivalency. So like, how many creatures? So three creatures, it says, is equal to CR plus three. Oh, I see. So you take the one. Let me let me see this creature. What its uh, CR is? Is it gonna be? Oh, okay. This creature is CR zero point five. Oh, okay. It's zero point five. So um, we got three of them. What does that mean? So I, th I think you just add. It says number of creatures. It just says CR plus three. So does that mean the encounter is three point five? That's what it seems to mean. Which means it would be quite challenging for us. Um, let me look. Let me look at the stats. Uh, the stats a little bit more. Uh, let me see what because I haven't seen. Okay, I want to see what they have in terms of. Yo, they have they have items and shit. There. I wonder. So I wonder, like, to what extent am I um, allowed to? Well, I'm allowed to do whatever I want, but to what extent the rules would allow me to would. Uh, you know, to like, so you roll three of them. Could I give you two? Could I give you one? Um, well, I said you could half any roll, right? Could you just half that? I've already half the roll. roll. Like, the reason you right. got this creature and not uh, is because of water, you half the roll. Um, so the question is, do we, can we also have the, you know, the number of creatures roll? That's another, of course, it doesn't mention that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, look, uh, if you, if you went to the forum and you asked James Jacobs, he would tell you, uh, definitely any encounter, uh, modify it so that it's doable, unless, unless the characters did something crazy. You know, you went and attacked the castle, then you're going to get the castle. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to change the castle for you. But uh, for random stuff like this, uh, they would always tell you to make it doable. Um, unless you make a huge mistake or something like that. Um, and the, the final thing that complicates matters is that I am very inexperienced, very inexperienced with Pathfinder battles. So I cannot, just by looking at the stats here, make a, a good judgment on how difficult this thing's going to be for you. Like, I have to go by the book that says 0 0.5, uh, 3.5 CR, uh, CR is too hard for you. Uh, I guess the way to do it would be to just match the CR to your... Uh, so for you, for example... The correct CR would be, um, I think, let, let me understand this way. So the correct CR for you would be 1.9, something like that, 1.8, let's say, right? So if these things are 0 0.5 each, Maybe one or two. One one of them is zero. Uh, CR zero point five would be too easy for you, right? Two of them would be CR plus two. Two of them would be the correct number for you. Yeah, that would give like a f from the encounter table that would make it like an average, average challenge, or, or challenging. Yes, that would make it an average challenge for you. And keep in mind that um, as far as my. Uh, you know, Ultimate Edition. I published. Uh, I published uh, an essay um, on what I think about challenge, what I think about um, difficulty in role-playing games, and uh, keep in mind that with Paizo's level. But first of all, their their adventures are very well balanced. Their, their campaigns are very well balanced, right? I've never seen like D and D uh, Second Edition is way worse uh, balanced, uh, but. Still, if you go to the forums, um, most groups that try to finish a campaign, they die, all of them. Uh, not just one time, but one, two, three, four times, something like that. It's very, it's very rare. It does happen. It does happen for a group to like finish the campaign without dying. Maybe one character dies and is replaced, two characters die. But uh, it's rare, but it does happen. Most cases, though, the group TPKs once or twice or three times, and then they find creative ways to keep going, um, which I don't want to do. So I want the campaign to be easy uh, so that uh, there's still the chance of you wiping out. There's always a chance. Every month, you know, you can make a big mistake, but it's small. And it has to be small because the campaign lasts a fucking year. And it's dozens, dozens of battles. 
and in weird situations and complex situations. So you're gonna come close to death anyway. You see what I'm saying? Um, and I want to write an article. I want to explain that this is the difference with the old school. In the old school D&D, before when it was just dungeon crawling, you go to a dungeon, right? You explore the dungeon, and everybody dies in the dungeon. So you then you roll another party, and you go back in the dungeon. But that is is not does not destroy the uh, the immersion. You know why? Because that's what the dungeon is supposed to do. The dungeon is supposed to be where lots of adventuring parties die. So when one party dies in the dungeon. It makes sense for another party to go in and another and another until one party wins the, the dungeon. So as long as you don't have a story, if you don't have a story, then you don't care how often the characters die or the party dies. That's the OCR. That's the old school revolution they're calling it now. It's some, some gay shit. You know, they want to go back to the old school. But the old school has no stories, has no characters. It's just a fucking dungeon. It's boring. If it was just dungeon crawling, I wouldn't be playing this game. For me, the game becomes interesting, with second edition especially, when they start having stories and they start having, you know, cities and characters and all that stuff. So when you, when they started making stories, they made a story for one adventure or maybe a trilogy of adventures, right? But Paizo went further and they made a hexalogy. Like what you're playing now is not one adventure or three adventures, it's six. So you need the same characters to win all six. Otherwise the story doesn't make any sense. Like, for example, now, Zelara told you that you're fated to be this blah, blah, blah. But if you die in the next adventure and then we roll another party, then Zelara told you bullshit. It doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, like, <laughs> if a dragon wipes us out in a random encounter and then we're like four random new guys, we wouldn't know any of this shit. Even like, if we find some way for you, to, for them to find, you know, the Zelara's deck from your bodies and take the deck, but Zelara still told you yet that you're the uh, like yeah, the, enti yeah. the entire Haro deck makes no sense if you die. Like all the yeah. stuff that all the stuff that she um, uh, because unless be she's more... just like saying bullshit, she's like, oh, the next four guys, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're the chosen ones now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that so, would be pretty dumb. Yeah. So th there is some wiggle room for air. Like for example, the guys are in Aslan. They're there with a ship with seventy people on the ship. So if they die. We can pick up a new group from the ship and send them out, uh, because there's not much investment yet. You know, it's but uh, uh, but in your case, it's impossible because we have the full investment from the beginning with uh, with uh, with the uh, with the prophecies, right? And then in uh, Opara, you know, they're nobles and all that. So in some adventure, some campaign, if it's if it's if it's a single adventure, because you will see later, we'll have standalone adventures on the map. You'll be able to choose them. So if, if you blow a single adventure, then th no big deal, no big deal. But these campaigns, it's a big deal. So they have to be tuned right to be doable uh, most of the time. Um, but again, I have to I have to stress that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. It's super dangerous because if you make one mistake, that's it. It's game over. That's why that's why it's like a roguelike. It's like it's it's like Diablo. You know, you play Diablo and you can play for two hours and it's super easy. And then suddenly you die and then if you're playing hardcore, it sends you to the beginning, right? So then even if it's easy, you have to be awake and careful every single every single step of the way because the smallest error sends you right to the beginning. Uh, and the, uh, of course, here there's no beginning. That's the difference. Like you will not get to the beginning. You just die and that's it. You'll play another campaign or something. Uh, if you blow the campaign completely and it's not possible for us to keep it going. So, again, I repeat, I'm going to tune these campaigns to be easy, but they're not going to be easy. What When I say easy, what I mean, I mean each encounter on its own should be easy. But you're not trying to win the encounter on its own. You're trying to chain perfectly 200 encounters. It's, it's very hard. You see what I'm saying? Chaining 200 encounters, even easy ones, it's very, very hard. If I don't make them easy and I make them average, you will never make it. You will never make it. Because you know what average means. <clears throat> average means you win some, you lose some. But if you lose one, it's game over. So it has to be easy. That's why I'm looking at this challenge rating table now. And I don't want to tune it to average. I want to tune it to easy. You see what I'm saying? And easy is APL minus one, average party level minus one. So if your average party level is two now, it's almost two, I would have to tune it to, I would have to give you CR of one now if I wanted it to be easy. CR, and keep in mind, especially yeah. random encounters, I want them to be easy because if you're going to die, I don't want you to die in a random encounter. 
Like, if you're gonna die, you may as well die in a boss battle or something. Really you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, 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 or against like some character, some nemesis, like something like that. Something. No, because two thieves in the street kill you. You know. So the for me, the, the random encounters are just there to uh, to consume some of your resources. So to eat some of your hit points. Um, maybe we have a wand of magic missiles and it's going to take a couple of uses of that. You know, I want to make it a little bit more, make the game a bit more stressful for you, but not, uh, obviously it's also adding uh, immersion and uh, the fact that, you know, we're saying that the streets are chaotic. So obviously something has to happen in the streets because if you just stroll around with nothing happening, then how are the streets chaotic, you know? Um, so to repeat then, uh, I would like this, this, so this, um, it's supposed to be a CR3 that we roll, but I want to bring it down to easy, which is APL minus one. Your APL now is about two. Okay, it's not two, it's a bit lower than two, but let's just say it's two, right? Two minus one is one. So I would like the CR to be one. So for the CR to be one, oh, let's see here. It has to be one creature. If I wanted to be one, yeah, I think it has to be one creature because it gets like uh, a lot harder um, when you add more than one creature because you have to add like plus one or plus two to the to the CR level. But now I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking, would this thing attack you? Um, anyway, I'm going to tell you what it is. It is a cut. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it. Cut purse. Cut purse. It's a thief. Um, so I roll for three cut purses to attack you. Which makes perfect sense, you know, in the middle of the riots, three uh, rogues, three cut purses to attack you. Um, I'm going to give you even more info, uh, because like I said, it's a tutorial we're all learning. So they, ha they have 10 hit points. So three of them, 10 hit points each, and the damage they do is 1d6 plus 2 with a short sword. Uh, but they also have sneak attacks and shit like that. So, it's... Uh, they also have a lot of stuff, acrobatics, uh, stealth plus seven, so they will stealth around you. We're going to play it out, we're going to play it out. I just have to decide now how many of them it's going to be. I Like we said, one of them you can take him on. You know what you can take him on? Like, because you have four attacks per round and he's just one, he just has one attack. So there's not much he can do. We can, we can chance it and play two. Can you take on two card purses, ten hit points each? I think you could. Let's give it a try because I don't think that one thief would attack four guys in the street when one of them is a fucking paladin with armors. The other guy has this giant mace or whatever it is you got, Morningstar. Um, I don't think one of them would be just suicidal. Two of them, um, you know, maybe they're overconfident and they will maybe they will make a try. But imagine if I had rolled eight, you know, eight of them. You you know, there's no way you would have you would have made it. And they also have items, so they have stuff on them. Keep in mind, keep another thing in mind that the random encounter also gives you XP, also gives you the stuff that, you know, you can get maybe money and other stuff that they're carrying. So, um... Yeah. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to leave here and you're going to type in the Discord that in the, in the chat that we're going back to uh, to Caleb's lodgings and then I'm going to spring the encounter and we're going to play it out. Uh, this is the first random encounter in any group that I um, that I run. So I had to learn this stuff. What about point. the encounter with the madman? That was not random. Oh. That was uh, had to happen. Yeah. It was not random. So I rolled a four. This encounter is going to happen. Um, I may as well. I want to write all the numbers down just to be sure. Uh, so we have. And then I'm going to write uh, 94 divided by 2.
And then the 1d8, so it was 1d8 cut purses and uh, <laughs> And the funny thing is, this cut purses, they have a little uh, asterisk next to them. And then it says, if this encounter occurs during chapter 2, you're in chapter 1 now. But if this encounter occurs in chapter 2, there's a 25% chance these creatures are... I'm not going to tell you the rest, but it, it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's funny because like you roll all these dice and there's, and there's like an asterisk for the chance of the chance of the chance of the chance. And you, it just keeps sending you to another book and another book and another page and another page. Like this fucking, the, the, these, these, uh, these cut purses are not even in this book, like they're in a completely different book, NPC Codex, which many players, you know, the one have, the one, many GMs might not have it. Right, um, so, and then I rolled, uh, the one, the eight was a three, which, uh, I'm going to change to a two to get a decent CR. Okay. Right. So, um, let's start. Uh, start typing something. Okay. Somebody can type. Let's head back to Caleb's lodging or whatever. It's late. I'm tired or something like that. So, type all that stuff. We, uh, our characters know about the ability Zalara's thing have where we can uh, expect items, right? Appraise. Uh, or you can identify. You right. can identify. Yes, they do know. It. Yes, she told them. She told them three times a day. She said, I think she said, uh, you you stick one of the cards in your forehead or something like that. You can you can check it in the chat room. If you survive this encounter, you can do some more identifying back home uh, before you go to sleep. And I want you to survive it because I have not yet made... I'm making a game over sequence. I haven't made it yet, so... Yeah, I'm so glad that we figured this out uh, because it's been bothering me for ages. And I've been putting back studying it because I have other higher priorities, but now finally I did study it. Your, your uh, streams look so much better now with all these images. Okay, you forgot the, the period, uh, was saying. Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's not Discord, don't forget it. Okay, so uh, we're going to do fast travel now, and what I have to decide now is where the attack's going to take place. So, it was easier in the days of D&D &D for me, you know why? Because in D&D, &D, almost everything was decided by the DM. Um, whereas now, so many things are decided by rules and dice, that when the time comes for me to make uh, a judgment on my own, I'm not used to it, because I'm used to rules and dice. So like, where would the attack happen? You know, I could I could throw a die even for the attack. Like for example, I uh, I, I zoom out and I look at the distance between uh, one and three on the map. And in my mind, I can uh, divide this into ten segments, and then I roll one d ten. And uh, let, let me try that. I'm just gonna roll one d ten, and that's gonna decide where the attack takes place. So I rolled a four. So forty percent of the way back home, that's where the attack happens. Okay, so. It's more fun for me too uh, when the dice decide stuff, because then I don't know what's happening and I want to see what happens and I roll the die, you know. All right, combat tracker. Uh, so. 40% of the way it would be around 
It's quite close to the city guard, actually, which doesn't make much sense. Why would they attack? Are they stupid? They wouldn't do that. So, I'm going to make it then. Yeah, I'm going to... Okay, then, I'm, and keep in mind, I think the dogs are more dangerous, so I'm going to make it closer to Zolaris. That makes more sense. Uh, of course, it depends on what road you take to get back. So, you would have to tell me what road you take to get there. But I'm going to do the most... Um, Okay, I'm gonna do one that just makes sense. Uh, we, what we could do next time, maybe you, if there was a way, there is a way to draw. You can draw. So what you can do next time is, when you do fast travel, you draw me the exact route you take, and then from that, I have yeah, that's what we're gonna do next time. This time, isn't it just assumed we go back the way we came? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you didn't you pass through here. Yeah, I remember we avoided that marketplace, that circular thing. Okay, so I'm gonna make the whole thing happen. Um, let's see. Here. Um, let me see in the party sheet uh, if you have set a um, an order. You have. Yeah, I'm saying, okay, they fixed the party sheet. Let me send you the party. No, I can't send you. You have to open it yourself. So at the top right of the screen, uh, there's three characters that uh, this is the party sheet. And you can set a formation. This is new. Like eight months ago when we we're playing, this didn't exist like this. You had, uh, but now they put squares and everything. So uh, you have to set your formation. Let me see if everybody's looking at that. Yeah. Um, no, only my signal's looking at it. It's in the order tab. Uh, the others they haven't even pulled out the party sheet. Guys, pull up the party sheet. Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah. Don't hit order. And uh, I don't know. Can you drag and drop your own characters, or do you need me to do it? Try it. Everybody, try to drop your own any, yeah, anywhere can, on the can drag out. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna let you now decide, uh, design your order, and then you can change the order wherever you want. Uh, the, yeah, you can change the order wherever you want. <clears throat> uh, but whenever there's an encounter, whatever the order is at that time is the order you're gonna be in, unless you're you're moving manually. If you're moving manually, your characters on the map, then it is whatever it is. Uh, if you, if you're fast traveling, the order is gonna be whatever it is here. Uh, can somebody be try the center, the center square? Can somebody be in the center square? Yeah, so you can use the center square as well. So you can be in a T, in a T, like in an L, like this. Or Y signal. How far back should you be standing? What's your range? That's probably the biggest thing we need to worry about. Um, I'm not actually sure. Not sure what the range on magic missile is. Keep in mind, we don't is, want him to be standing too far back because people yeah. can sneak up behind us. Yeah, the thing is, if I'm if I'm close to other people, that means they get attacks of opportunity and stuff like that. Like if we're, um, yeah, if I'm on my own, it's it's not necessarily good. I do wonder if we should have the um the um in so well I suppose you could set it up once we actually get there but like if you have the um the t the two tanks apart again they have to walk through that they have to get they have to take an attack of opportunity to go through between those two guys ah, right. in fact i think they have to take several so is if we're sort of like this it depends on like like if it's a narrow alleyway how, like whether they can walk around and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know the best way to position it. The square. I just get five foot out, right? Yeah. I think the no, order. The, the, square, the squares like are five feet. They're not five feet apart. Each square is five feet. Huh. There's nothing between yeah. them. Uh, the, the space that you see here between them is just for, you know, I, I guess. Yeah, that's better. what I meant. 
Yeah, I, I think the order five we have, feet, yeah, five feet right. apart, you have you have to leave a square, empty square between you and someone. What are you saying, sir? I, I think the order here is is probably about right, but um, I'm not sure exactly formation wise what would be best I, I think sticking uh, pretty close together in, in in this situation is a good idea just because if we are moving down streets and they're you know like buildings ahead of us behind us so things could yeah sneak up around from from any side really to attack us it's not like a dungeon where it's just like a corridor so I, I think that that works okay for where we are I don't know about you guys so I see this arrow at the top. Where does the, what direction does that point in? The direction you're so, going to. Okay, so it's not the direction of the enemy. No, it's the travel direction. The, the enemy can come from behind, from the side. Can come from yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the sky above you. The sky, and yeah. in which case, you know, the formation matters less. But <laughs> I, I, I think this is good. For the sky, are. the sky is gonna be di is difficult to play D and D in three D, but when you have tailspire, it's perfect. You see? Oh yeah, that would work so well. It, and Telspire, dude, you can have entire. That's why um, the the Ruins of Aslan uh, campaign has underwater battles. So that's very 3D. And people were complaining about that; they're very difficult to run. But in Telspire, oh yeah, it'd be so you can flood an entire room with water, and you can have, you know, it's perfect. And um, it, the, with Telspire, the thing is that you can see all the boxes in the room, the desk, the chairs. So people start thinking in 3D and they're like, I jump behind the desk, I pull the chair and I throw it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they say, I've read people saying that the battle skin Talespire is so much more dynamic just because people have perfect idea of what everything is in 3D. All right. So you've, you've done the order. Just keep in mind, if you want to change the order, you have to change it. Otherwise, when I roll the dice, the order is whatever it says here. Unless you're micromanaging the characters in the... Um... So I'm going to throw up the characters there now uh, the way you showed me. Let me see. I wonder if it's possible to just drag from the party sheet. Anyway, um... Guys, this is the best formation if we're worried about sneak attacks, right? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Because in that case, we don't really want, especially you and um, Addison, we don't want them like separated. And why is mm. still level one? He's on that. He has much less health than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Much less health, level one, and and a wizard as well. So he could go down in like one hit. All right. So, um, let me see. Hmm. So, I have the, the only problem is, let me see. One thing I haven't um, prepared is some kind of music for the battle. Um, I'm going to look really quickly in uh, fantasy grounds, in fantasy in if there is something. Otherwise, we're just going to play it with the, uh, with the background noise. With the background. Definitely, I was not prepared for the random encounter at all. 
next time I will be. The reason, partly the reason that I wasn't prepared for it is because I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know if there should even be a... Uh, okay, okay, there's one that says Street Battle, but... No, it has... No. No, we're gonna play. Uh, hold on. Actually, not a bad music at all for uh, for attack by uh, by rogues. So now I just have to figure out the surprise. Sneak attack, these guys attack sneakily, and uh, they're going to attack from behind. <laughs> right. Let's see how I add them to the... Uh, because th these enemies are not an encounter, they are a random encounter from another book. I have to drop them to the... Um, I have to drop them, yes, I dropped one of them. Two. I dropped two of them to the um, to the uh, coma tracker, and then um, okay. So first, we have to figure out if you notice them. Um, you look at the image. Oh, there's a great image. The image is fantastic. So you have to roll perception versus their stealth. Um, I'm going to do all these, of course, now you know all this stuff. If I was if I was a great GM right now, and if I knew what I was doing, then all these rolls would be happening secretly. You wouldn't know anything until you got hit. But now you do know stuff. So, uh, wait. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm uh, okay, all the rolls, yeah, I think that should be easy. So, what happens is, first of all, the uh, cat purses roll... Um, they roll their stealth, face and reach, where is your stealth, yes they roll the stealth, they have stealth, so that is for the first one and that is for the second one, so they both roll their uh, stealth scores. And now all four of you have to roll perception. Again, I'm rolling for you because you're not supposed to know any of this is happening. Uh, okay, so that was my signal. That was Saf. It should be a faster way to just roll for the entire party perception. You can probably program it and put it in a, in a tab at the bottom. And that was Dino. So let me look at the perception rolls now, exactly how this works. Yeah, uh, one thing I didn't do that I should have done is that add modifiers because it's dark, it's at night, blah blah blah. So I should have added modifiers. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to type here. Delete all checks above. We're gonna roll again with the modifiers. So what are the modifiers? Or let me pull up the stealth check.
I'm gonna send you what I'm reading. So when they use stealth, they move on half their movement speed. They move a right. So their checks uh, don't seem to... Yeah, I'm gonna roll them again. Their checks don't seem to have any modifiers. It's just it's just your perception that has a modifier. Um, let me roll their checks again. They don't have any uh, stealth modifiers. Yeah, it, it is stealth plus something. It's pretty high, but that's okay. that's calculated into the. Um, yeah, that include that should include the like. Dex it also, ex yeah, it also includes includes the dexterity, it includes the armor check penalty. I think. Let me see what armor yeah. got. Uh, gear. It should include. Yeah, they're wearing uh, studded leather. And uh, I'm not going to check the math now. I'm going to suppose that the math is correct, um, because you know I just bought the fucking book. It should be correct. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 should be automatically. Like I've got a I've got a minus six because of my armor. <laughs> So I rolled again their two checks, oh my. <laughs> the previous ones were much better for you. <laughs> but I said that I'm gonna roll them again, so I rolled them. Um, yeah, they rolled, before they rolled 16 and nine, and now they're all 26 and 22. So. <laughs> but you're gonna roll again, so yeah. Okay, so for yours, perception covers all five senses. Oh, it says Perception DC. Uh, perception modifiers now. Distance to the source object. So, the further away from you they are... Uh, so the question is... But see, they're supposed to... It's plus one per ten feet, right? But they're supposed to be moving. And uh, they can move half their... Uh, so, 30 feet... They can move 15 feet. Let me let me drop them on the map. Wait. Uh... We have one of them here and one of them here. So they pop up from the building and uh, you know they move behind. So the question is you know they can move 15 feet and attack. So let's see. Um, I will have them. I will have them uh, hiding. Uh, I'm gonna move you here. That will be uh Yeah, so see plus one modifier plus ten feet, but uh he moves through fifteen feet of space. So I guess it's just a plus one. Through a closed or no throw will no. Uh unfavorable conditions. I think it's unfavorable because it's at night, uh depend the night. Terrible conditions. Is it terrible conditions? 
I would have what assumed terrible was like fog and stuff, no? Yeah, probably. More extreme, it says. For example, candlelight is terrible. A roaring dragon is terrible. An overpowering stench covering the area. No. So it's unfavorable. Uh, unfavorable conditions means... Uh, plus two to the check. Plus one. So I, I will give it a um, plus... See, the distance, since they're trying to strike you from the back, the distance is going to be zero eventually. So it starts out 15 feet away from you, but when he ends his move, he's right behind you. So that means that you still have a chance to hear him when he's right behind you and turn around. So I'm not going to give a, the, you know, the plus one for 10 feet. I'm just going to give the unfavorable condition plus two. But what does plus two mean? Oh, it makes the DC... Um, Harder. You know what the plus two means? It means it raises your uh, because your DC is your enemy, your stealth. It means it raises their stealth, so their stealth would be okay. So they do have a modifier to their stealth, unless I put the modifier to your no. But okay, so I'm gonna delete those two checks of theirs that I did. I'm gonna roll again for them. Delete all checks above. Right. So I'm gonna roll for them, and this time I'm gonna roll with a plus two which comes from unfavorable conditions plus two. Okay, let's do this. Stop. And then the other one, plus two again. Okay, so human rogue, still plus two, self plus two, they rolled. So now I have the numbers there, it's perfect in the thingy. And uh, now we can roll again your perceptions. Starting with West Signal. Right, and finally, uh, so whoever gets the biggest number, and I suppose that if you roll the same number, then you did, um, you did spot them. Because you have to roll the same or above. So, Addison didn't notice anybody. Nicholas no noticed both. Caleb and Nilvaner noticed nobody. See, they rolled 17 and 25. And Nicholas rolled 25, so he noted both of them. But everybody else rolled 12, 9, 11. So. So, uh, let me go the 15 feet that they move. So they move. The guy is here. He moves 5 feet here. Guys, here I'm trying to find something and I can't. But isn't there something where rogues can't be sneak attacked by rogues less than 4 levels? Within 4 levels of themselves. Look for that if you can find it, uh, because one of them definitely. For like five minutes. Okay. Uh, you can also Google. You know that helps. If you can't find it in the book, you can just try googling it. It usually works because all the rules are online. Yeah, I'll have a look too.
Oh, by the way, let me tell you something. This is what I'm going to do with the distance to the source object plus one for, for 10 feet. So, um, one of the rogues rolled 25, and Nicholas also rolled 25. This means that Nicholas noted him, but he noted him. Oh, wait. Nicholas is he's not uh No. Okay, he's scratch always... that. You need to be level eight for the thing I was looking for. Uh in any case, put okay. it on Discord, I wanna read it. Because we might we might need this situation. I had never heard of this situation, so let's let's uh, finish with that first and then I will tell you what happens with so uh actually Nicholas only noted one of the enemies, not two, because they're both isn't it ten feet away now? Let me see. Uh So one of them is 10 feet away, and the other is also 10. They're both 10 feet away, so that means um, they both get plus one. So he heard one of them, but not the other. He heard the uh, rogue number two. Who's rogue number two? Who's like that? Okay. It's, it's an, oh, it's a skill, oh, it's a class skill. He can no longer be flanked, that's cool. Fair enough. It's too advanced for us right now. So, so yeah, uh, let me add that. Nicholas doesn't notice uh, Rogue One. Because of plus one for ten feet uh, perception uh, DC uh, Modifier. Yes, because for, uh, for essentially uh, because of the distance, he's the rogues is twenty six the roll and Nicholas roll twenty five, so he does notice that guy. Nicholas does notice roll one. Okay, that's gonna stay there. So let's we'll see how we're gonna play this. Um, I'm going to I'm going to send a whispered message to Nicholas. As you walk, uh, as you walk, as you walk down Warehouse Way. Um, nearing, nearing the intersection with, I don't have the name of the street, it could be Bromathen Street, it does look like Bromathen Street, okay, intersection with, uh, Bromathen Street, Um, you notice a uh, a dark clothed figure darting um, from behind, darting from an alley and rushing. Let's see. So. It's human rogue two. Human rogue two is rushing whom? And rushing Addison. And okay. As you walk down the warehouse way near the intersection with Bull on the street, you notice a dark clothed figure darting from an alley. And so now what I can do is I can share this image just with uh 
just with Nicholas. Let's see if that's gonna work. Yeah, I got it. All right. So you want to? I'm gonna check out your stream. You want to uh, put it on the screen somewhere? I didn't get it. Oh, uh, only he gets it because only he noticed him. Uh, yeah. And then when the rest of you see them, I'm going to send them to all of you. It's pretty cool. Okay. Do I have time to, like, say or do anything, or is it just going to yeah, go straight to combat? Oh, okay, I'll tell you how it works. Um, basically, because they have you, you haven't noticed them, they get a surprise round. So this is a question of yeah. the surprise round. They get a surprise round. So I think that because you have noticed one of them, you get to play in that round too, but no, nobody else plays. So, okay. first, uh, who plays first? I'm supposed to roll, first of all, I'm going to roll initiative. Yeah, I think we all, if, if it's like D&D, I'm not 100% sure, but we all roll initiative, but then they get an extra round um, compared to the, the so surprised look, people. I have roll initiative, Caleb comes first, but he hasn't noticed anybody, so he doesn't play. Yeah. Uh, so, first is human rogue one, he plays. So, the thing is, as it has been explained to me in the last game we played, in a surprise round, you only get either a, a standard move or a move action. Like, you don't get you don't get two. Let's find that. So, that would mean they cannot, that's how, that's how you get it, like, they cannot, can they move and attack at the same time? Or is, is there move outside of the, I think that's how it works. Like, they move up to you. But that was before the surprise round. So now is the surprise round. Now, now we're the, first of all, uh, I'm gonna make this 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 guy visible to everybody, even though only um, even though only Nicholas can react to him. I mean, in the next round, you will see both of them. So I think I can make both of them show NPC. Can you see both of them now? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, just remind me in the next round to also send you the, the image. So, <clears throat> Human Rogue One wait, is the guy that uh, has not been noticed. Nicholas hasn't noticed him. He plays first. Uh, I'm going to target Caleb. And the question now is, they moved up to you. I don't think that the move counts as a surprise round. I think the surprise round is after the move. Otherwise, how could they backstab? How could they uh, sneak attack? If the move always counts as the surprise round, then they cannot attack. So basically, they woke up right next to you, and then we're all initiative. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to play the attack. Human Rogue One, there we go. And let me make sure my rolls show GM rolls. See, every time I have to, I have to turn the GM rolls on now because before they were hidden. Now I don't want them hidden, so I have to remember. There we go. Eighteen hit. Four hit points. Uh, wounds and he has 19 hit points. It's good now because you're second level. You know, if you were first level, it would hurt, but second level is not too bad. Uh, so that guy played. I just want to see something uh, about there. Oh, that he can sneak attack. So maybe the sneak attack has different stats. Let me see. Uh, unless, yeah, I think sneak I think attack gets, is, is okay. It gets an extra dice, I think. It gets in there, yeah. Uh, but let me look at it. Let me look at it on the book just to be sure exactly where it is. So uh, it should be in classes, um, rogue, class skills. Page yeah. 68. 68. Uh, It's not surprise attack. It's it's uh, is it? Yeah. 
No, it's not so bad. Yeah, no. yeah, he gets on the first level, he gets sneak, a sneak attack. He has a lot of skills. Why am I not seeing? Is it really page 68? Uh... It's the second subhead and under class features. Oh, yeah, okay, I was looking further down, okay. So, yeah, so I think that you would be denied the dexterity bonus AC now because you're flat footed. Or when the rogue flanks her target, uh, does that, does that uh, from the right count as flanking? What counts as flanking? In any case, you would be denied, you would be denied the thing. So I just have to roll another 1d6. And I wonder uh, if I can roll it from his sheet. Can I roll it? No. No. No, I just have to roll another 1d6. How do I make sure that that... How do I designate a sneak attack in the... Uh... I don't think there's a way to do it. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna go like this. And then I'm gonna roll one to six. Three. And then I'm gonna... The wounds now are seven. So he, he's got 12 hit points left. But I think that's, you know, further attacks won't have that sneak thing. I think so. Let me make sure that I'm, uh, the gear, I want to see if he has anything. Okay, that's done. Next. Then we have the other one. Um, he targets Addison. Wait, no, that was a mistake. The other one targets Addison. Is there any way to integrate the sneak attack now? I think. Uh, well, first he has to he has to roll the attack. And now, the damage, and I wonder if I could, and now, oh, you know how you could do it, no, no, there's no way, All right, I'm rolling normally, okay, and then, oh, I could have just rolled another, Another no one is expressed. Okay, so uh, sneak attack, sneak attack. Just roll another one to six, three. So that means that Addison now uh, just only one hit point left. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again. Uh, if, if you were second level, you don't know because second level, uh, you might have rolled one on the second level extra hit point. And then, do you have any from Constitution? No. So you could have, you could be second level and just have one more hit point. Probably though, you would have like two or three more hit points. 
still not a huge difference. All right, uh, next. New Valor uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't hear anything, nothing, and just Nicholas plays. And plays, and you've only seen, uh, so normally I should not have uh, shown in the screen for you. I'll actually, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, anyway, there's no way to fix it now. But what I should have done is not reveal the second character to you so that you wouldn't even know where he is to attack him. You see what I'm saying? Uh, now, though, um, Caleb has not a team because he got damage from him. Uh, so you've only seen. Let me look out. Human rogue, human rogue two. So you've only seen human rogue two. So you've only seen this guy. Of course, okay. you've seen also that your friend has gotten hit. So maybe you want to heal your friend. Maybe you want to attack that guy. I don't know what you want to do. Okay, I'm going to. Uh move first and then I'm probably going to heal him, yeah. Yeah, move all the way there. Can he tell us about this? Can he say something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me hit, right? Yeah, Uh, keep in mind, um, it's a surprise round, so the question is, I told you that in a normal round, you can have one long sentence or two short sentences, and I'm thinking whether now in a surprise round, I'm going to make this just one short sentence, because you have half the moves, that means you should have half of it to speak. So you only get one short sentence. Say something. Uh, okay. Remember to hit enter, not control enter. Hit enter. And you can also use the mood if you want to shout. But I don't know why you would want to shout. Well, you know, I don't know. Do you want to shout? If you want to shout, we can use the mood controls. If you want to whisper or shout, obviously you don't want to whisper. Oh. Yeah, I, I think everyone's like really close by, so I don't have to shout. I yeah, just... plus it's the middle of the night. Yeah, so be better not yeah. shout. <laughs> that's short enough, right? <laughs> yeah, that's short enough. That's short enough. All right. Okay. So um, now, as for the uh, the spell, let me see. What spell, what do you want to use? Um, I, I just need to double check how channel energy works again. Because it's been a while. Um, uh, the I channel energy that. works. It heals everybody. Uh, it would heal even your enemies. But they're not hurt. Yeah, but they haven't been hurt yet, they so now been. might be a better time to use it. That would make sense. Um, by the way, you only have three out of six. Is that because you used three of them on the... Um... Yeah, I haven't had a rest or anything, so I, th I only get uh, six a day, so I think it's still the same day. So I've, I already used three of them in... All right. Some so the way account. you do it is just just uh, pull the blue ribbon uh, in your um, abilities, blue ribbon from Channel Energy. Pull it and uh, hold on. To the chat log. Uh, in the in the chat log. Yeah, drop it in the chat log. And then um, I think it's just one d six, isn't it? Um. Yeah. Wait. Oh, on D6. So, as third. Uh, as third. You plus get two one D6. Uh, yeah, for uh, every two clerk levels. Okay, so it's just one D6. So, roll the one D6, and we add that to both of them. Right. So, Addison uh, is uh, has lost four hit points, and Caleb has only lost now two. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, and so then. Next turn on. If you, oh wait, 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 wait. Why does it say round four here? Uh, round four. I, yeah, I, it should be round one, right? Or even round zero. I don't know. Let me do something. When I started the turn, did it say the turn? No, it didn't say. That. Well, um, I don't think I can change it now without. Let me see. Next round. I don't think I can change that now without uh, fucking anything up. So, just hit next turn. So it says round five. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, edit round five to one. So it must not have reset from the last battle. No, it doesn't reset automatically. That's the thing. I have to reset it, and I can right. get it. Yeah, yeah. Now we'll do it. Uh, rest initiative. Delete effect. Delete the tracker. No, I don't want to mess it. I don't want to do anything now yeah, and mess yeah. with the uh, thing. All right, right, Caleb, now it's the first normal uh, round, and, and now everybody has noticed everybody. So let me uh, let me 
send you the uh, cat purse. Okay, so you don't know it's a cat purse. That's why it says human rogue. He's not identified. Um, so we're going to roll some knowledge checks now. To see what you know about this creature. This, this kind of character. Do I roll knowledge local or will you? No, uh, I'm not sure if it's knowledge local. We have to look in the book. In, actually, not in the book. We have to look in the um, knowledge check. And we have to see what kind of... Lo it probably is local, I'm not sure. We'll have to check. Okay, I'm going to send you the knowledge page if you want to search with me. So when you scroll down the knowledge page, first, put the enemy on the screen. Oh, let me see if everybody's got it. Yep. Um, Kiro, um, uh, in the rogue, um, you know the uh, he has the, the right and the left borders. Make it smaller. To the, only the right and the left. Yeah. Of the rogue, make it smaller. Everybody else has got it good. Yeah, the screens look amazing now with all the stuff. You really get a feeling if you just jump in the stream, for what's happening. All right, uh, I am gonna send again the uh, knowledge to everybody. Okay. So if you roll down for Monster Lore, this is what it's called, what's called Monster Lore. Um, so what type of field of study uh, constructs humanoids? Humanoids is local. So it's not undead, he's not an outsider, he's not animal, he's not aberration, he's not a construct, he's humanoid. So it's only the knowledge local. Um, does anybody except uh, Kirok have knowledge local? No, we divided it up because I don't think we anyone has the same as anyone else. Really? But uh, some some people just get stuff from. Uh, I'm just double checking. Some people get stuff from like a class, or maybe from like um, traits, campaign traits. They might might give them a. Uh, knowledge relational. No, you're right. All right, so um, go ahead and roll knowledge local. By the way, let me see, um, because Rico rolls that a lot, he has put it in his 16. Okay, uh, listen what are you going to do, Kiro. Uh, open your character sheet. Yep. And uh, <coughs> where it says knowledge local, yep. pull the ribbon down to a hotbar key at the bottom of the screen. Well, the knowledge local blue ribbon. Let's see what happens there. Don't click on it. Pull it. You can't for some reason. You have to drag and drop oh, the dice, but it works. Yes, yes, it does. Okay. And then I think you have to click one. Don't do it now, but next time. You just click one down there and it's good. Yep. Um, all right. So you roll 16. Uh, 15 is for ba 10 is for easy questions. 15 is for basic questions. So you can know some basic fact about... Uh, and I'll give you a basic fact. First of all, that it's a cut purse. So I'm going to make him identify it. Um... That means I'm going to make the image identified. It's a cut purse. So all this is going to go in the overworld. That's what you get for 16. And then if you had rolled 20 or higher, I would give you some facts about his combat tactics. Something that would help you if you had rolled 20 or higher. Which you haven't. Let me see. Yeah. So now the image, instead of saying human rogue, it will say cut purse. All your images say because you identified him. All right. Do I have to say that to the other guys now? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, normally, what I should have done is I should have just given it to you whispered. 
obviously there's no uh, you you could have shouted out they're cut purses or uh, stealthy or something like that but since i didn't give you if i had given you important info about their tactics then i would have whispered to you and then you would have had to tell them uh next time but in this case it doesn't matter because uh you know because i didn't give you any important so will i just, so I just say, say something it. anyway or you can say something anyway yes you can say whatever you want yes fantastic fantastic so that's done uh and now you play let me know what you want to do Uh, I guess I'll just do a standard attack. So you have to type that I draw my sword. Control enter. You can also say I draw my sword and attack the uh, the copper the coppers next to me or something like that. Just double checking. I have a rapier. Yeah. Well, it's a sword, isn't it? No, I couldn't remember if I was using Gadrian's dagger. I'm still using the uh, rapier. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, and you're medium and cumbered. No, you're light. Medium starts at 76. If I understand correctly. Yeah, uh, you don't have to type that you attack anybody. Yes, I draw my rapier. Um, with control and left click, you target him. Um, hold on a sec before you roll. Are you trying to move? Uh, I'm ducking around. Control and left click didn't work. Really? Now it worked. Targets human robot. Look, uh, I'm looking at the combat tracker. Uh, ah, now it worked. Yeah, yeah. It worked. Um, so I'm just trying to figure something out. You're carrying 60 pounds of material, and you, light and cumbrous is 38. Medium 76. No, I think it's fine. It's fine. All right, let's let's not belabor the point. Um, Oh, is he flat-footed? No, because he attacked. They're not flat-footed. They both attacked. Right? Uh, no, he's not flat-footed. Yeah, so... I, th I think they were just flat-footed in the surprise round, which we which we finished. They, w they wouldn't be even in the supply because they're they're the ones that are. In the... I can't imagine. Oh yeah, no, the the, the weren't flat-footed. Sorry. Sneaky. Yeah. Okay, it, go it ahead was, and uh... double click. So pull out your um actions in the sheet. And double click the number one next to the rape here in the little square. Not confirmed. And uh, and then double click the one D six piercing. Alright. And if you're done, click next. Wait, so why, why is the crit not confirmed? He rolled a uh, he rolled he rolled a, a, a twenty four. It says crit eighteen. Oh, he rolled a nineteen plus five. It's the second roll that makes it confirmed or not. Oh, okay, right, and he rolled a one. Okay, I see. What would he have to roll for it to be confirmed? I'm not sure. I have maybe another like 18 or more. Why does he have to roll two? I mean, oh, I see, I see. Because it's not a natural 20. I think natural yeah, 20. Yeah, it, it's not a natural 20. Since it was just a 19, he has to make a second roll um, to see whether he crits or not. Okay, I, I understand now. 
Wait, right. so is it 19 for everyone and 18 because I have the rape bear, or is it 20 for everyone else? It's it's mostly nine, 20 for other people, but sometimes it's 19 to 20, but I think... It's 18 uh, for, for me. For you it's 18, yeah, for some reason. Okay, that's Might be because he's a rogue. Or the rapier. Yeah. End anyway. turn. Okay, end of the roll to play. How do I uh, end the turn again? At the bottom left of that's the... That's an arrow, tracker. yeah. This is an arrow, that's it. Alright. Human rogue one is the guy that's next to you. And... And it says in his engagish or okay. So there, now we have the nice thing that you would have found out if you had rolled. Um, the rogue continues to engage his initial opponent in melee or throws acid if all his opponents are at range. So we're gonna see what the acid does. But I'm still As adjacent to him, so he won't do that, right? I don't know. Yes, you're right, because he's gonna take an attack of opportunity. But it doesn't but the way that it says it here is that before combat, it says before combat, the rogue hides so he can use sneak attack. We did this. During combat, the rogue continues to engage his initial opponent in melee or throws acid if all his opponents are arranged. So that he says during combat, while you're fighting, maybe it's, it's worth for him to get an attack of opportunity if he can, you know, acid all of you. So let me look what the acid does. But wait um, a minute, wasn't the condition that we have to be at range? Well, you are at range. You're right next to each other. But does that mean within range, or does that mean that... Let's see. Uh, I right. think it means if he's at range, because he has to be, uh, like... Uh, some distance from us. Basically, uh, the acid, you can throw a flask of acid as a splash weapon, treat this attack as a ranged touch attack with a range increment of 10 feet. So basically what he would do is, he would throw the acid, I think, to Caleb, and then every creature within 5 feet uh, takes one point of acid damage. So. But what I'm saying is, it's, it is, does it say in range or at range? It says uh, at range. Or throws at acid range. before. Yeah. At range normally means you're like away from somebody. Like shoot somebody at range. I see. Do you mind like... posting that into the Discord? Because I think why signal is right here. Yeah, sure. Wait. Uh... But it wouldn't make sense because he's supposed to attack. Sneak. Look, you can see exactly what it says. This is these are the tactics of the of the carpers. Yeah, I mean that sounds more like it's saying he does this melee thing, melee thing, or if he can't do that because all his opponents are at range, he throws acid instead. Because at at range, I've never heard that used to mean like somebody's within reach. It usually means like you're doing something from a distance. Yeah, uh, tactically it wouldn't make a lot of sense because all you do, he does just an extra hit point to the guys next to you, next to Caleb, uh, and then he eats an attack of opportunity. So is it worth to eat an attack of opportunity? Um, it's not. So, but what would be the scenario where he would use the acid? Tell me one scenario where he would use the acid. If I ran away to try to get a shot at him or something. To get shot, you mean with, with your bow? Something like that. Well, it uses the word if, which is a conditional. If I run away, that's what he does. No? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the combat continues and people... Uh, yeah, he, he, I guess he will use the acid if uh, nobody's standing in front of him. And he can get splash damage out of it for extra people. Fair enough. All right. Um, so it's just going to be another normal attack. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Christ. Oh Lord. Boom, Shakalaka. He has five hit points. See see why why it has to be easy. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Um, next. Imagine if you had rolled eight of these. One D eight card purses. Eight. <laughs> yeah, no, we'd be fucking dead. You know how many how many sneak attacks we'd be sneaking like all over, all around you. Right. Yeah, we'd probably die before we even like get to do anything. <laughs> I would have assumed only one person per party gets a sneak attack, no? Um, what do you mean? Uh, like, just eight of them doing it simultaneously just seems a bit yeah, absurd. Yeah, that'd, that'd, that'd be a little absurd, yeah. I guess, I guess uh, maybe maybe um, four of them would uh, attack from behind and then the rest would just dump acid from you. <laughs> <laughs> At least somebody, I think that's the first time they miss, isn't it? The first time they miss. Now, finally, the paladin. Um, so, type first that I draw my sword. And then control enter. Unless you want to do something else. I don't know. What else do you have? I don't think you have anything else. I draw my sword. And then, uh, first tell me what you want to do. And then I'll tell you how to do it. Um, if I move right, do, do I provoke an attack of opportunity? Yes, yes, yes you do. And I can't, you I can't can attack him from there, can't you? You can attack from there. The way to attack from there is uh, you uh, hold on control and left click on the rogue. Alright, I'll do that. That's it. You, now you're targeting him. And now uh, g uh, pull up your sheet and go actions at the bottom. And then click oh. the little uh, one right next to great sword. Double click it. Jesus. All right. I don't know if you have anything else to do. If you don't, next round, hit on the combat tracker on the bottom left. All right. All right. Addison. Uh, you're going to get the attack of opportunity if you move there. Yeah, but I'm going to... Oh, if what I you can do... Small, the same thing. What you can do is the five foot step, right? You want to do that? Uh, how does that work? I'll tell you how it works. If if you move away from him right now, he's going to attack you. If you do a five foot step, he doesn't attack you, but you cannot move again this round. It's like right. a, a careful withdrawal. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Wait, okay, uh, you don't does have to... that count as a free action he would be using to draw his weapon, though? He doesn't have a weapon. He's a wizard. Mr. Right. So he moved there, and that's it. And now you right, can so do your a standard right. action. Tell me what you want to do first, and I'll tell you how to do it. So, sorry, does that mean I can cast a spell? Yes. Well, it depends. The preparation time and all that. What spell do you want to cast? Uh, magic Missile. Right. Uh, let's see. Should I target this guy? Uh, so... So the magic missile has a um, casting time, one standard action. So you have one standard action, it's one standard action, you can do it instantly. Um, so what you do is this. First, you target who you want to target. Who do you want to target? Le uh, control and left click. Yeah, I've done it. Let me see. You, got it. Uh, you target a human rogue two. Okay, yep. that's a mistake. Uh, I'll tell you what it's a mistake. Because the other rogue has taken some damage. If you look at the... Uh... Right. Yeah, so, the hero's in danger as well. It's better to hit somebody, you know, so you can kill somebody. So then they have fewer attacks per round. Yeah. Yeah, plus I've, I've still got rogue one engaged. Oh, so yeah, they don't get him. Yeah. So to, uh, uh, to untarget the guy you've targeted him, uh, control know. and left click on him again. Oh, you've done it already. Okay. Okay. Then um, pull up your character sheet, um, actions, scroll to the bottom, and left click next to the magic missile. There's three circles. Left click the first circle. Yeah. No. You click the, right, the wrong circle, right? Yeah. Uh, did you click? Yeah, I clicked the left one. The leftmost? Let me look at your screen. I see. It's weird. Oh, okay. It's just two. I don't know. Uh, it had three. 
and I have two. Yes, it's weird. It's weird how it worked. Um, I guess I'm gonna do it for you. Let's see. Ah, uh, maybe I'm in the wrong mode. I'm in prepare preparation mode. Okay, okay, that's my mistake then. Uh, combat now where? So hit the leftmost circle. That's it. And then hit the little magnifying glass to the right. To the far right, there's a magnifying glass. Hit it. And that op should open. Uh, should open up. Right. And then hit the cast. Right. And then hit the damage. The PMG. Yay! Right, so I don't think that's correct because um, I have intense spells, and that should give me a plus one on uh, evocation spells. Uh, and the magic missiles are already plus one. One d four plus one, so should it be one d four plus two? All right. Well, let me see the um, magic missile. So dealing one d four, so one d four, one d four plus one, and then I'm looking at your abilities. I uh, think it is right, and you're saying intense spells. Let's read. How many? You that means every time you cast a magic missile, once per day. Uh, let me look at the thing. It says, whenever you cast an evocation spell that deals hit point damage, add one half your wizard level to the damage minimum plus one. Okay. Okay, says, again, 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 to a spell, so, not so, one time. okay. So the, this uh, class feature is not. Um, you know why it's not calculated? There's two reasons. Let me see. Uh, if we look in your classes, it says wizard level one. Maybe it should say evoke. It should say evoker level one. And then right. we added the skill uh, manually. So maybe if you were an evoker, I don't know if that would be automated. Um, what we could do now is, yes, this is probably what we're gonna do. Let's do that. So, uh, delete uh, Addison damage roll above. So I delete the damage roll, and what you do is you go to the modifier at the bottom left of the screen, and you add plus one. Yep, that's done. Right, and then uh, we go back to the spell, and you just hit the damage again. That's all, just the damage. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Okay, so this did two hit points of damage. I just have to give him back the two hit points that you took. Um. So you took two hit points from him, and he was back, and now you can um, hit the damage. Okay, well, that was better for you guys. Alrighty, so we don't touch this anymore. And unless you have anything else you want to do, hit next turn. Let me know what you want to do. Uh, keep in mind now, if you try to heal again, you're going to heal that guy too. Yeah, I'm going to uh, attack Rogue too. Because if I, if I move here, I'll get an attack and fuck You could also uh, heal Caleb. With a... Uh, do you have cure level ones? Uh, I have, I think, one spell left. And I could use that, actually, to cure him. You're right. Um, wait, 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 wait. You've used two cure level ones. Yeah. But you have a spell, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I could swap uh, out um, Cause Fear um, yes. for a third one. Of course, you know, it's just going to be a 1d8, and it could just be one or two. Uh, um, <clears throat> I don't know what the best thing to do here is. I'm just saying there's that option too. Is So so Kirog's still standing, right? He's standing, and he... Uh, okay, you, can a lot you guys of see, can yeah. you guys see, hold on, hold on, okay? I think you can see the... the yeah, you, can you see the... Yeah, you can see his... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The the bars. But but uh because you're in a party, uh he can tell you how many hit points he has. You can tell you he has uh eight. So eight is not too bad. Eight is not too bad. Especially now that the sneak attacks are over. They just have short swords. So eight is not too bad. Okay, am I might yeah, I, I might still just attack Rogue too. Yeah. Um yeah. 
target him um let uh, control and left click to target him that's it and then um let's go to your uh actions and uh, weapons at the top uh double click next to the morning uh, which weapon do you want to use the morning star right oh yeah uh do i have to type i i yes, take it out yes. right i draw my morning star and then control enter morning star with uh, lowercase m remember Yep. Yes. And then double click the uh, one. Uh, what do which bit do I double click? Sorry. Uh, right next to morning star, there's a little square with a one. And a, a, oh, a yeah. die. You can see the die, the little red red die in there. Oh, Ooh. nice. <laughs> oh, sweet. Critical hit. Okay. And oh, then yeah. Double click the nice. damage. That's it. That's gonna do some damage. That might kill him actually. Yeah, I did kill him. About seven is a lot. Yeah. Still pretty good, yeah. All right. Uh, and unless you want to do anything else, like a free action or, or say something, you can say something even if it's not your turn. Uh, so the only thing you got left now is the. Uh, you can do a five foot. Can you do a five foot step now after your? I'm pretty sure you could do a five foot step away now if you wanted. Wouldn't that provoke a attack of no, opportunity? No, five foot steps don't. No. no. Okay. Uh, you know, you know what though? I, I'm not. I'm like 99% sure about what I just told you. Uh, because we used these rules uh, just like a couple days ago. You, you, you guys are are, are are lucky because um, I did a huge battle with the other guys. Uh, when was it? Uh, Friday, Saturday, and I learned a lot of stuff there. Uh, but let me just really quickly go back again to combat. Uh, is the movement, movement position and distance. Uh, special movement rules, I think it might be. Uh, or you know what? I can just I can just do it. So, five foot step. Didn't miscellaneous foot. actions. Miscellaneous actions. Let's see. After eight combat actions in combat, miscellaneous actions. What page? Uh, let me see. One eighty nine. I'm pretty sure that is the way that I told you. Let's check it. Yes, you can take the five foot step before, during, or after your other actions. Yes, the five foot step would basically mean that he would have to move. Of course, it wouldn't be a big. Let's say you move five feet be, be, uh, behind, right? Okay, when his turn comes, he just moves five feet forward and attacks you. It's not. So you cannot avoid his attack that way, but you can make subtle maneuvering. Let's say, for example, that you want to get your back to Caleb so that uh, they can't flank him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, if I can. Yeah, if I can do a five foot step. Uh... So just move five feet, that's it. You don't have to type anything, yeah. that's it, boom. Also, and then by the way, you can stabilize me pretty easy now. Yeah, yeah exactly, because I'm right next to you. Yep. Okay. I'll, he would uh... get a, probably get a attack of opportunity if he did that with the other guy, but... Uh, next, hit next turn. Yep. Right. And I'll have to type again. Uh, change round six to two. Ready? Right. So now, yeah, it's you. Tell me what you're doing. I'm attacking. Yeah, just roll. Nice. Sweet. That's it. You dropped him. So the question is, what does this guy do now? He's, uh, his health is way low and his friend has just been dropped. Uh, I want to see if they have morale checks in this game because in D&D 2nd edition they do have morale checks. Uh, where would his morale be? Image, gear, uh, spells, languages, skills, feats, saves, Maybe, maybe instead of morale check, they would call it like a fortitude save. Anyway, I'm just gonna Google Pathfinder morale check. Pathfinder 
Firefighter, Moral Check. A Moral Check is made... No, wait. Yes. Somebody asked this question back in 2013. Let's see, in the Pfizer form. Okay, in third edition, they did away with the morale check and suggested the GM simply let the NPCs decide in character based on the particular situation. Then the mechanic was revisited in 3.5 edition Heroes of Battle, and most have a morale and discuss. Yes, so basically, what happens is. So basically, what happens is. Um, the GM checks, uh, decides, based on the character, but in the adventure paths, most enemies, it tells you in the entry. Uh, but this is not in the, the adventure path, that's the thing. This enemy is not in the adventure path. He's from another book that you roll on a table in the adventure path. Otherwise, for example, for Gadrin and for all these guys, for, uh, for the orc, for the dog, for everything, I had all their combat, when they were gonna flee, etc. But for this, because it's coming from another book, um, it doesn't say when they flee, so I have to make, I have to decide myself. And you know, if I was him, I would be fleeing right about now. So the question is, how does he flee? Um, actually, I know exactly how he flees because we did it last time. It's called the withdraw. Let's see, um, where did I find it? Is it in the book? No. Uh, what page were you telling me? Uh, special attacks? No. Miscellaneous, you said. Where are the Are you looking at the five foot for the five foot yes, Yeah, what are the five foot steps? That's 189. 185. So I, around there, I also. 189. 189 is the withdrawal, okay. Withdraw, 188. So if he uses his full round, that's a withdraw. He can move up to double his speed. And the square he starts out in is not considered threatened. Therefore, he could just run. So you don't get an attack of opportunity. He cannot take a five foot step in this round, but he doesn't need it because he can just turn and run. He would get attacks of opportunity if he passed uh, through other threatened squares, but not the initial square. The initial square is not threatened. Yeah, so basically he just runs uh, double his movement speed. So his movement speed is a human, he's just 30, so he can move 60 feet. Let me first... So he's not targeting anybody, and he can move 60 feet. Let's see. Uh, so that will be. Tell me something. You can't see him now, can you? No. No. That's right. Uh, because he turned a corner. And... Right. So that's him. Next. Um, uh, Dino. So, if you want now, you can use your... Um, we're still in the... We're still counting rounds. Because I don't know if you want to change him or not. But you can use your your lines to speak to decide if you want to chase or not. What are you going to do? Um, I'm. Hmm. Anyone can anyone speak? Anyone can speak because it's a normal combat round, and you don't have to speak in turn. You you know during the round anybody can speak at any time. You just have either one big sentence or two small ones. So that's a small sentence, so you can reply if somebody else says something. Oh, 
Oh wait, I should have typed something. I should have typed something. I'm gonna type something now. Uh, hold on a sec. Um. Uh, what kind of attack did uh, cause the hit points? Uh, who, uh, was it who, who who took his uh, hit points? Was it uh, it was it was you, Nichols, right? With with the uh, you sap with your critical hit, right? Yeah, yeah, I hit him with my critical. But it, it was a bludgeoning weapon, so he's not bleeding; he's just hurt. So yeah. see his comrade fall, and um, I'm uh, and I'm trying to describe it, and uh, shocked by uh, the force. Of Nicholas's Nicholas's um, strike. The cut purse. Um, Okay, seeing his comrade fall and shocked by the force. Okay, and then I have to add a note, uh, move, description, move description earlier, and I'll figure it out. Okay. Good, okay, now you can continue speaking. Okay, that's a long sentence. So that's that's your uh, your speaking yeah, for this I round. Yeah, I want to uh, attack. Okay. Well, you can't attack anyway. He's down. Well, actually, okay. you could attack. You could. Uh, we did it last time again with the guys. They they uh, they fell some goblins, but some of the goblins were like bleeding to death, or some were some were stable, and they finished them off. So there's a move to finish them off. Uh, basically, when you finish someone off, you don't roll an attack. You roll damage immediately. And I think it's double the damage. And so you could, if you want to basically execute him. Um, wait, but is he dead or is he... No, he's stable. He's exactly basically zero hit points. Uh, which means that he could... Uh, first of all, if you use um, the channel energy, he's going to be healed too. Um, so that's a problem. And also he might... Wait, he's stable. What does that mean, though? Uh, okay, I have to look in the book. I think zero means that he's down, but... Uh... Let's see. Injury and death. Disabled zero hit points. It's page 190. Oh, okay. Okay, so he wasn't down. Okay. What what did it what did the um it said disabled. The uh so I have to throw on him the disabled status. Let's do that. Effects so zero because in in D and D zero means you're unconscious, you're down, but apparently not in uh what is that for? Staggered. I haven't seen it. So he's conscious? Yeah, let's say he can, like, he can move. Um, but if he tries to do anything, he'll take damage and. Lapse into unconsciousness. So he can still fight? 
Yeah, but like I said here, I think if you like, you think he attacks, he takes automatically takes uh, damage, takes one hit point okay. damage. Well, uh, first thing, I'm trying to find the staggered uh, condition to to drop on him, but I can't see it in the. Uh, I think it's not constant. Why is this condition not in the list here? Okay, I'm gonna Google it. Fast finders. Uh, finder. uh, so it's in the appendix. It's on five sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm saying where is in the fantasy grounds? Um, Oh. You know, interface. I do not see it. I do not see it. Wait, so that means he could have played? Uh, or did he play and then... Yeah, that means he could have played. God damn it. Alright, well... Alright, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna roll some stuff back. So the last thing that happened, that's correct, is... When um, Caleb attacked, he rolled 17, he hit 3 hit points, that's exactly what he had. We basically roll everything back, so... Yeah, I'm bringing back the other guy. He was there, right? Okay, um, then I'm going to type that uh, delete everything uh, after Caleb damage. That's it. And now after Caleb's damage, it was the human rogue one turn to play. So it was precisely the guy. There it is. It was precisely the guy. It, so he's been hit, um, he has been staggered, so let me look back at this again. Look at the book again. Um, he can either take a single move or standard action, so... Yeah, and it says if he takes a standard action, he takes one damage afterwards, so he can do like one thing and then he'll be... He collapses. In the, collapse. Yeah. Uh, but if he moves, he doesn't... Uh... Yeah, he, he can move half speed. Unless his activity increases hit, hit points. So let me look at his equipment now. Does he have anything he can drink? Something that's refreshing. He has acid, but it's not very refreshing. And he does have a potion of cure light wounds. So he can drink. Does that provoke an attack of opportunity? That's something that we have to find out. There's a table that tells you exactly. That would be nice to have this table handy without having to look into the book. I'll I'll do that sometime uh, next time. Um, actions in combat, action types, and that's where the uh, the, the table is in page 183. As yes, bring compassion or apply it and loyal. Which um, which table is that? Which uh, part of the table? Uh, standard Trigger. action. Standard action. Drink a potion, apply an oil. Attack of opportunity, yes. So the next question will be uh, will the attack of opportunity come before he drinks or after he drinks? Uh, 
it's before uh, attacks of opportunity before because like if you step back they hit you and then you step back hmm. isn't he also allowed to take a five foot step and then drink yes Oh, uh, so I guess. No, I, I don't think so because he only gets either a move or a standard action, because he's on zero health. Right, right, right. The five foot step again. Okay, yeah, the five foot step uh, is supposed to be the move action. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, if he did that, he wouldn't be able to drink. But we're saying, what if it, in a normal situation, if he wasn't at uh, zero hit points, could he take a five foot step? And then drink, yeah. But then he would have yeah, to go and attack. Yeah, I think he wouldn't be able. Yeah. You have to go and attack. Yeah. So we're still here. We're asking for this question. Does he? I'm sure that somebody has answered it. If we Google it. Um, wait. Uh, first of all, I would like to save. Hold on a sec. I just want to save that page where I found that about the morale. Because I didn't know about the morale. Uh, uh, it says here in the attack of opportunity section, it interrupts the normal flow of actions. So you do the attack of opportunity, then continue with um, the the action. Uh, so I think it that? happens first. Um, One eighty. One sec, I'm doing something and I'll check it. We're moving very slowly, but we're learning a lot of things, so I don't mind. Because I'm going to use all this stuff with, other, with all the other groups too. So let's check page 180. Plus, you are supposed to move slower than the other group because uh, sample has to explain. Right. Um, attacks of opportunity. Tell me where in that paragraph. Uh... Oh, yeah, an attack interrupts the normal flow of actions. Immediately resolve the. Yes, immediately resolve the attack of opportunity, then continue. Wait. Hmm. Yes. It does sound, uh, it does sound like. So basically, he he reaches in his uh, in his uh, gear to pull out the uh, the potion, and then he gets attack the attack, and then depending on how that goes, I mean, he will drink no matter what unless he's uh, you know dead. So okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, Kiro. What? You uh, hold down shift, and you, uh, first of all, you are targeting that guy, right? You're targeting Carpers 1 already. Correct. So, uh, I think the way to do it is, uh, you pull out your, your uh, character sheet, go to actions, go to your rapier, and hold down shift, and double click the 1. And that should designate it as a... Yes. Hmm. Should I have, should I have mentioned the the, uh, the potion before? Was he flat-footed, by the way? No, no, it's in the middle of all. It's in the middle. Of, unless the staggered condition. I don't know. What, what page is the staggered condition? I just ask because I have some bonus against flat-footed people. Oh. No conditions. Okay, I found it. Um. Dang it. Yeah. 
Wait, is drinking uh is a full round action drinking the is is drinking the, the uh, I don't think it's a full round action. Drinking the uh, the potion. The standard action, is it? It's a standard action, right? Would I do an attack of opportunity as well? Wait, yeah, that's interesting. I think so. Yes, you would. So what you do is uh, go to your weapon, to your greatsword. Yeah, and shift and click. Shift and click, yes. I think he's gonna die. Yeah. And then double click uh, the damage and this is over. He's now... Uh, It says dying, right, on your screen? Um, yeah. It doesn't say dead. Okay. All right. So that's interesting that this all this happens. So what I have to do now is add. Uh, wait, no. I want to be, before the attacks of opportunity. I need some something in the uh, in the chat log to show that the uh, Cutpurse is trying to pull out a uh, a potion. Okay. Um, Card and staggered the cuppers facing uh, Caleb tries to pull out a potion on his belt right and then okay it should not have okay uh, remove yeah, the, remove brackets from line above and move it right uh, before Caleb's attack of opportunity. Right. Okay, so <laughs> what happens now is that everything that happened before with the other guy happens now. Uh, but we may as well redo it because, you yeah. know, because when I'm, yeah, okay, let's just do it. So the way it's going is, uh, wait, so first, uh, next, what? What was this? Uh, so the Capers, why would the Capers 2 roll over stabilization? No, it's Capers 1. He rolled for stabilization. That was automatic. I didn't do anything about it. And it looks like he took damage because he failed to stabilize. So he's dying now. Every round, every round he's dying. Okay, so now I'm just going to copy paste now. I'm just going to type um, copy text to clipboard. And then boom. There you go. So now this is in the correct uh, order. See, his comrade fall and choked by the force of Nicholas Strike. The Capers turns and flees in fear. And he has 16, let's do his 16 uh, feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and then That's it. You shouldn't be able to see him anymore. Okay. And now, um, what you can do is, you can retype uh, uh, what you typed 
um, first uh, first West signal. Scroll up if you want to see what you type. Just retype it. Right, and then um, Dino. If you want, if you want him to face justice, you're gonna have to heal him because he's gonna be dead in a few in a couple of rounds. So you're gonna have to at least stabilize him. Somebody's gonna have to stabilize him. All right, should I end my turn? Um, no, because now you've talked about you, you you've used your talk your talking about the turn, but you can also do an action. So if you wanted now to, I don't know, Caleb is typing something. Maybe he he wants to tell you to execute him. <laughs> but, um, try not to forget the, the uh, accents here, the uh, apostrophe. Let's need an apostrophe here, Kiro. Um, so if you want, you can um, stabilize him. Uh, nobody can stop you because it's your turn. You see, uh, of course, people mm. can. But can type something. They, if they want to say something, they can say something. But if you want to stabilize him, uh, you just have to say that I tend to uh, the cut person's wounds. Type that and then control enter if you want to do it. Keep in mind he also has stuff on him. For example, the potion, you can get it. I'm not saying that to uh, Nilvalor. Nilvalor is thinking, first of all, about the guy's life and justice. Not for everybody else. But you have to wait until your turn comes. So, I did the kind of person's one. So, um, let's see. I think it's a heal check. Is it a heal check? Heals. Says you're treating deadly wound sticks one hour of work. Really? Oh, first aid. Is that, is that... You're trying to stabilize, not heal, though, right? Yeah, first aid. You usually use first aid to save a dying character. You can make him stable. Uh, he doesn't regain hit points, but he stops losing them. First aid also stops a character from losing hit points due to effects that cause bleed. Right. So it doesn't say how long the first aid lasts, but uh, oh, it does say a standard action. So it's just like six seconds. Um, DC 15. Uh, by the way, all this time, if people can still talk if they have talking points left. Um, so go uh, go in your uh, skill in your skills uh, dino and double click. Uh, the plus three next to the heel. At the end of the heel line, there's a plus three in a, in, in a square. Double click that. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if you should have targeted him. Would that have made a difference? Let's try. Wait, are you already targeting him? I think I am. Yeah. Yes, you're targeting him. So, I guess it's not automatic. Oh. Uh, Anyway, the check, the DC was 50, oh, and I should have, I should have typed the DC in, uh, anyway. 
First aid, DC 15, you rolled 12, you failed, so I'm gonna type something. That was a standard action. You also have a move action if you want to move. And that's pretty much it. Uh yeah. Um, I think I'm my turn. Okay. We're still taking turns. I suppose yes, this guy's right. We're still taking turn because you know he's gonna be dead in uh, I don't know how many rounds. In a few rounds. Uh by the way, before you type something, let's see when the last time you spoke. Is it the same turn? So you said, let's, uh, let's patch Caleb up. Okay, so you have another small sentence to say. If you speak more than that, then you can't move or do anything. This is still just round two. Like, this whole thing took 12 seconds. Staff, it's you. Alright, so we have a problem here. Uh, you have to check your uh, alignment, uh, staff. Stop, uh, stop typing, nobody type anything. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to check your alignment. Google your alignment. Okay. Okay, uh, we can stop. We can, um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, you know, he's lawful neutral, we don't have to play, you know, you're learning, you know, you've been together for a bit, so we don't have to hide the, uh, so, I put, I put a link for you on Discord, lawful neutral. There's obviously many links, but let's check, you know, let's be in the same page. Okay. Let's check that first. Uh, 
Okay, I see. Um... We're in the aftermath of a riot. Doesn't that relax the standards a little? Uh, look, it's not It's not only that. It's definitely what you said. It's also, there's other things in play. The question is, does lawful neutral mean that he always adheres to the law? Or is there another? Because obviously there's the lawful part and there's the neutral part. Does the neutral part have any effect on the lawful, on how he interprets the law? Or does it does it mean that anybody who has lawful in his alignment means that he follows blindly the law wherever he is? That's what I, you know, I don't know. It, last time I played this game, you know, it was 30 years ago and things were simpler then. Uh, so I'm trying to figure this out now. So uh, let's read a couple of links. First, let's read this link. It's, I mean... You are in a period of anarchy, but the laws are still in effect. You know, the guards are yeah. trying to enforce the law, and obviously they're having trouble. So, wouldn't a lawful character, would, uh, you know, want to... Um, ...help them? Or does it make a difference that, you know, he's not lawful good, he's lawful neutral? Does that make any difference? It's obvious what the lawful good guy wants to do. The lawful guy, yeah. the lawful good guy, first of all, he doesn't want him to die, right? And the second of all is he definitely wants to bring him to justice. If at all, you know, he's not, you know, he's not going to um, cause a whole party to be killed just to bring one cut person, you know, he's not retarded. Uh, if it's possible, you know, because, for example, you're not far from the guard and you're not far from your home. So it's definitely uh, conceivable that you could carry that guy to, you know, four of you could carry him to the... On the other hand, keep in mind that, you know, uh, more bad stuff could ha happen between now. I, that's what I'm thinking. Like, how do I play this? Because the book says one random encounter per night, right? Uh, one random encounter roll. I roll only once. But does that mean that after that roll, you are you can just walk up and down the whole fucking city all night long and never run into anything? You see what I'm saying? It would make much more sense to say that one random encounter per kilometer or something like that. Like if it, that's how a video game would do it. A video game, you know, calculates like that. But uh, I think the way that I would do it uh, is I roll the one random encounter per night you know the 20 percent chance of one random encounter and that's all you get unless you're being unreasonably um you know if you're being too uh oh first of all yeah i forgot experience points jesus there's so many little things that i just keep forgetting experiences you know it's not a little thing but let's see how many experiences this guy gives and uh, yeah, that has to be done first. So hold on, hold your horses for now. That's the thing. I don't know in this fucking sheet where does it say. It says this range. How can this this uh, car this uh, creature entry not give me? Okay, I'm just gonna Google cut purse pathfinder. It's an archetype. Uh, no, I found it. Okay, XP 200. For some reason, on the internet, uh, so you got 400 XP now. It's not bad. Um, I have to find how. Let's see. How do I put it on the party sheet? Because if it's in the fan, if it's in the adventure, then there's a parcel that you drop. Everything is very structured. But if it's from a random encounter, the question is how yeah i know how yeah i would have to build an encounter 
in Fantasy Grounds, and then that's how you make it, but I don't know how to build an encounter. So, for now, Four hundred XP divided by uh, four people is easy to do. So it's just a hundred XP each. I'm just gonna type this little note in here and I'm just gonna manually add 100 XP to each one of you for now. Six to three for um, Addison. Oh, it looks like Nicholas. Six it looks like you have the exact same XP. It's for level two, though. You know, uh, six or three for Nicholas. Six or three. XP is done. Uh, what was I? I was looking at something else. Oh, the level neutral again. Let's get back to that. Yeah, we're talking about alignment. Um, I I think my character wouldn't want the cut purse to die either. Um, but with the neutral, it looks to me like the neutral is not important. With your character, it's not important if the cut purse dies or not. Uh. I think let me let me put it another way. The way I read it here is that he says, being morally neutral, a character of this alignment sees both good and evil as tools to use to maintain order. So you use good and evil as a tool. Right now, this guy dying is evil, right? But it is a tool towards restoring order to the city. Because yeah, that like guy if it was if it was someone in I might be more like, you know, care about him more, but since he He's just a cop person who tried to exactly to to stab us. Um, he doesn't. He does. I I think that it makes sense. Look, look. Keep keep in mind that the alignment is not a straight jacket. There's a lot of room yeah. there for um. So I'm just saying, from the point of the rules, from the point of the from the perspective of the rules, uh, whether or not uh, you care about him dying is immaterial. It's up to you. Uh, so the alignment doesn't, your alignment, lawful neutral doesn't care. It's just up to you if yeah. you want to modify your character to make him a bit more empathetic or a bit less empathetic, it's up to you. The question yeah. is, uh, the, the tough point is the, um, whether you, to bring him to justice. Uh, from the Paladin's perspective, both he, uh, healing the guy and taking him to justice are 100%, they have to be done. Unless, yeah. you know, unless it's mortal, you're, it puts you in mortal danger or whatever. Uh, but from your perspective, the the thing is whether you would side for him to be taken to, and it it sounds to me because he's lawful. It sounds to me like he would want, uh, unless you see, you know, his death as a sort of justice, because, uh, you know, he um, he wasn't just uh, pickpocketing people. You know, he was killing people. Yeah. And in the middle of the night, with backstabbing and double damage, you know, these people are, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're. They're cutthroats, you know. They don't give a shit. So uh, you could you could definitely say that you know uh, you know his punishment should be should be uh, death, basically. Yeah. I think that maybe um, you know yeah. So uh, let, let's check. Let me check everybody else's alignment. So in the case of Addison, he has the same as you, no level neutral. Same as you, and then we have Caleb, who has chaotic neutral. So, uh, 
Caleb can do whatever he wants, pretty much. <laughs> I wanted to leave him for dead. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't and want that. to slit his throat. Yeah, well, uh, he's gonna die anyway in a few rounds if you don't do anything. But uh, from your perspective, you you don't even pay attention to like how, when, or what he's gonna, you know. Well, like um, it's the middle of a fucking riot. I just want to get away. There's gonna be hundreds yeah, exactly. more of these guys. Exactly. Um, just keep in mind if you do the uh, the channel energy heal, he's gonna be healed too, unless you uh, put some distance between you and him. But uh, in any case. Whose turn was it now? It was uh, yeah, it was, turn. Still my turn. Can I say more? You can say another another uh, small sentence like the one you uh, just said. Okay. I'll be back in one sec. I'll be back in a minute as well.
Alright, so I'm back. Uh, so Nicholas typed that, and alright, so um, Sam asked me a couple of questions, hidden questions, and uh, while I was away, I was in the toilet, and I was thinking about this. And I'll answer you uh, publicly, um, Dino. So basically, the way I see it, first of all, uh, he did, uh, Dino did bring something up now that uh, we left and looted all the bodies in the fishery. So that definitely has to be, uh, well, the looting is, uh, you know, looting your dead enemies is fine. Uh, the people attack you and everything, it's not a big deal. Uh, about leaving them though, first of all, uh, Gedrin died when you weren't there. So uh, it was it was Caleb who killed him outside on the, on the pier and you weren't there. And uh, so the question is, Should you have patched up all... I guess I wasn't thinking about the Paladin back then. I was just... You know, we had just started out and I was so overwhelmed by all the complexity of the combat. I wasn't thinking about the Paladin. Um, he did say though, Dino did say that maybe we just left them because of all the chaos when we emerged in the morning. So that's, that's a decent excuse. Um, well, let's, let's put it this way. You were going there to kill um, Gedrin because he was evil and he was causing all these crimes and obviously everybody who was working with him was evil too and uh, and keep in mind that Zalara have been trying to get the city guard to uh, pursue uh, Gedrin but they, they you know they, they uh, gave her the runaround they said they were busy etc etc so I suppose since uh, there was also the personal issue with your brother and all that. Uh, we could say, you know, we could say that that night you weren't really thinking about justice that much. You see what I'm saying? It makes sense to me that um, in that one instance, there's just so many uh, factors. The fact that that character had been eluding justice for such a long time. He was so good at eluding justice. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe he was bribing uh, officers as well. So in that case, uh, you know, we can let it slide. In this case, let me put it this way. Um, I think that your character, you know, would want to heal him. But as for taking him to justice, uh, isn't already enough punishment the fact that, you know, he's almost dead. And well, on the other hand, on the other hand um, you know, if he yeah. lives, he's, he's going to go on to do this again to others. <laughs> So you would you would want to either kill him, which you wouldn't do, or yeah, yeah. I th I think that your character would just carry him to the city guard, and if that seems too dangerous right now, he would carry well, him back to your. Go ahead. Um, I was looking at the settlement uh, website, and it says you can call guards. Yes, they have they have rules for uh, calling guards even during riots. Yeah, that, well, um, the, the role would be different, I think. Let's check. So it says, well, uh, it requires a diplomacy check modified by the settlement's low modifier. So the low modifier for Corvosa right now is not the same as it was normally, it's worse. So your diplomacy check would be worse. Um, so you want to call the guards here, you mean, instead of having to go yeah. all the way? Well, um, I was also thinking, like, if, like, he died, like, would I have to report the body to the guards? In a normal situation, yes, but maybe not during a riot. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 we can rule that. So, um, all right, let's, uh, first of all, let's see who's playing, because you're not playing anyway. Uh, mm. He said, take his weapons and let him face the streets of justice. Okay, and then do you do anything else, Nicholas, or you can, uh, stop, or you can just uh, end your turn? Um, I'll, I'll end my turn. Okay. Oh, I could have added an item. Hold on a sec. 
I could have added an item manually uh, to the party sheet to the award. It's, yeah, uh, here we start with something. Right, this counts as a long um, sentence. Alright, so this guy can't do anything anyway, but he's gonna roll again the... Uh... <laughs> He died! <laughs> oh, all that talk for nothing. He died! <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, I suppose somebody notices. Now, whose turn is it? Okay, let's, the next turn is Neil Valor. Okay, Neil Valor is kneeling next to him and he's trying to heal him. So, you know, he checks his pulse. He says he's dead. So, type something. You can type, he's dead anyway now. <laughs> and. It's funny because Nicholas could have saved him with a heal check. But he chose not to. Remember to hit enter, not control enter. That was so funny, dude. So, yeah, you can loot him now, if you want. Okay, hit next and let the others loot him, just, just because it would All be right. ridiculous <laughs> if you just started looting him now. <laughs> Alright, so well, we're, we're um, leaving, um, I'm going to clear the, uh, we're leaving, um, we're not tur doing turn-based anymore. So you can just type whatever you want. Now the paladin will say, "We need a burial. We need to bury him." <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, okay, you were here. Um, what signal? Yeah. You could have gone like this. Right. Okay. Cool. Can you go right across? Yeah. As long as you can don't you end your turn. Can you do that in combat as well? Oh uh, yes. Oh okay. Cool. Well, actually, I'm not sure. We have to look. Next time, if it happens in combat, we'll, we'll read about it. I'm not sure. Probably, though. Oh, that means you can do channel energy now without uh, healing him. Um, Kirok has already al already removed the, the image of the cut purse. You shouldn't have. He, oh. Well, now forget it. Doesn't matter. Just keep in mind for the future. Um, he's still in the picture. He's still on the ground. Uh, we're keeping that. You can get rid now if you want of the uh, the combat tracker. Definitely. Um, but as long as he's still in the picture, might as well leave the image there. Um, can I, yeah, can I use my, uh, last spell to, um, do... Spell or, um... I guess I could use, um... Lay on hands. So who, who... Yeah, I could, I could use my, I could use lay on hands, um... I could use channel energy, but, uh... Wait, you don't have lay on hands. Sorry, not, not lay on hands, uh, cure, cure light wounds. 
You want to use that on hope, but there's two people that are. Caleb. There's two people that are um, injured, so you could just use a channel energy from both. True, sure. um, but that's only one d six. We have time. Better to use another. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'll I'll use that. Um, so just drag I... the channel energy, uh, oh, Raymond. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to. Oh, is this three out of six? Oh, it should it should be. Uh, I'll, I'll change that. That should be. No, I'll change. I can Let me change that in my abilities. Um, but I put it. What? Um, why did you? Why so I used that once before, and then I use it. I'm using it again now. So it would be five, right? I see. So you're saying that in the last chat log, you only use it once. Oh wait, but you use it also in the morning, and so it's the same day. So I think you used it. Um, you've been using it. Uh, you use it on uh, Y Signal uh, at the dock, at the pier, and then uh, that that's why you only had three. Yeah, that's why I only had three um so now you should two not five oh, okay so i think i think i went the other way around here um All right so I've, i'm I'll, i put it into don't change that number again i'm gonna okay. be the ones who's gonna be changing the stuff okay so no uh, just roll a 1d6 yeah right uh hold on a sec Right. So now I'm just going to manually add. Let me go on tracker again. Five to Caleb, so he's up to uh, nine hit high. Nine hit was lost, and Addison is uh, four heal. So that's not bad. Oh. I think we could leave it at that, could we? Like. If if you expect another attack, first of all, now for example, Caleb has. Um, let's see. I could switch to the crossbow and just hang back for a while. Um, he has thirteen hit points. Not bad. Maybe let me hang on to the health potion just to be safe, but I think we should be fine. Well, somebody has a right that you're searching the, you know, you're searching the, um, you don't actually know it's a healing potion, uh, so it's it's unidentified, but you can drink it if you want. You can just drink I it. have lay on hands, I think. Well, let me look at your abilities. Lay on hands, three out of three. Yeah, you can do one d six. So if you want, you can type. Um, you don't type anything actually. Um, open your uh, open your sheet. Yeah. Abilities. Lay on hands. D grab that blue ribbon and drop it in the in the chat room. Oh, I see. Uh, the difference is. Channel energy acts on everybody, so we don't have to type anything. But uh, you, yeah, okay. Type. I lay. I, I lay my hands on Caleb. Control enter. I lay my hands on Caleb. That's it. And then uh, roll one d six. Is it one d six? Let me see. It's one d six. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <Good work. laughs> right. Well, uh, you still have. Let me see. You still have two of those if you want to keep going. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna do it again. Do it again, and then just uh, uh, drag it. No, no, do, uh, no. Right. Uh, yes, yes. Just, just drag it one more time. Drag the the ribbon. And uh, now roll the one to six again. So you have one left. Uh, nothing. Well, he's now, he's not too bad now. He's uh, lost 60 points, so he's got 13. Not bad. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that.
I tried to search the body. How, how do we deal with that? You just like I searched the body and then control. Yeah, I, I, I've done that. Oh, you did it. You searched the yeah. body. Okay. Uh, let me tell you what you get. Okay. Hmm. There's a bunch of stuff. Let me just read. Here's all this uh, cool shit. Wait. Mm, bunch of stuff I can oh, okay. In the past there would be oh I will be dropping them in the um the party sheet, there is the, is it inventory? Yes, there's the, uh, in the party sheet there's an area. We go, first of all, what about the money? He has 25 GP, so I just put the 25 GP in uh, parcel and coins. Okay, I'll put it there. And then, uh, I think the way I do it is I just, Click. I've done it before, but it's been a while. Yes. So now you can see automatically you um you uh, split up the money that he had. But if you look at the party sheet, there's still one GP, one SP, and two CP there. So the way we could do this is instead of one. No. So that stuff stays there, and uh, until you know, until we throw more of it and. So let me see now. Okay, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop. Yeah, I know how I'm gonna do it. Flask. So you find a flask. You find a dagger. Uh, there's his armor. Uh, keep in mind, this armor is masterwork studded leather. So it's for a human, right? And I don't think that Addison would be able to see that it's uh, masterwork. But I think the others would, some of the other ones. C Caleb and Little Valor should be able to. I'm all so, wearing, Eddie wearing standard studded armor, so I would like that if possible. Exactly, exactly. So I do think that, the, my problem is this. You didn't say that you searched the body, or that you look at the stuff. Um, Addison did. And Addison, you know, he wouldn't know about the armor. But in the, the cases such as these, I'm not going to be strict with like, I, I suppose that everybody takes a look at the items. You see what I'm saying? Otherwise, the, the game would be bogged down, especially, you know, in battles where the six people, whatever. I, I, you know, I assume I need one person to say something in the chat log that you search or whatever. I don't need every person to, to uh, but I assume that everybody takes a look at it. And then I just drop all the stuff in the party sheet. And then you look at it from there and then you know you decide who takes what so he's got a flask he's got a dagger master will start the leather a potion let me see uh, you know you know what the potion does but you're not supposed to know uh, magical potion it says magic no, why does it say magic it's just a potion the non-id name should be just a potion. there you go and then he has a um how would i call this he has a because he has some crazy items, some weird items. Okay, a wooden stick. Let's put this way. He has a wooden stick. A stick. Then he has a short short. Then he has a bag which has is a small sack. Okay, it is a small sack. You don't know what it is inside. Uh, small sack. Uh, 
a sec. And finally, he has, uh, you know, the thieves tools. That that you can easily see what that is. So now I have to drop all the stuff. Let's see. Yes. Oh, he has two of these flasks, not one. And he has a dagger, a master of solid leather, a potion, a smoke stick, choke sword. The back. Oh. Wait. Okay, hopefully you didn't see that. Um, but even if you did, you don't know what it means. No ID name. Is the small sack white? Why does it still call it? Uh, oh, it's probably for me. Okay. The tank and finally the thieves tools, right? Because the thieves tools are. You know, um, they're not free. They're not okay. Don't don't check anything because I need to. I need to remove the prices. Uh, so you don't see them. I'll be right back. Yeah. See, in the when it's non ID, they should remove the prices. Weather. Well, actually, for the stuff that you know, I should have left the stuff on here. Anyway, um, you 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 have so much shit. Right. All right, so all the stuff now. Uh, we'll wait. Let's wait for stuff to get back. But uh, go to your party sheet and go to all the stuff is and start looking at it. And start thinking about who's going to get what. And then we'll figure out how you drop stuff to your uh, inventory. Uh, as for the discussion of who gets what, it should be done in character in the chat. You can actually start doing that already if you want. You can type, for example, Kira can type, I'll take that armor. When you say, uh, look at the items. Do you just mean look at the list, or is there more detail? Uh, let me look at your screen. No, there's no more detail. Uh, well, um, do me a favor. Where it says small sack, keep the ribbon next to it. I want to see. Yeah, it. I get it. It, it brings the window. Nothing. Up exactly. So you know nothing. It's just a small sack. Okay. If you want to examine it more, you have to tell me. I open the sack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But maybe you don't want to do that in the middle of the street here. You just want to grab everything and, uh, you know, try to give it to whatever person you think will be more useful or whatever, and then leave. You don't have to take everything. You can take whatever you want. Maybe you don't want the sword shirt, for example. On the other hand, you can get some money by selling the sword shirt. So, you know, the, the, the stuff is not free. So the other guys have backpacks. Um, do you get a, like this this sack uh -huh. does that increase the amount you can carry or does it have some no function? it's a small sack i should have let me um Small sack means it's more like a pouch. Right. So you can't put anything. It's all, it already has stuff inside it. It's not just an empty sack. Maybe I should have said something. Can I just type, I search the small, look inside the small sack? Sure.
So you can do an identify later. Uh, you know, we'll have to find out what kind of profession would. Uh... You know, this was the first I'm gonna type. This was the first. I'm gonna type on this. Today was the first random encounter in the battlegrounds. The thieves' tools, they aren't consumable, but we may as well take them because they're kind of valuable. Yeah, they are available. You might lose the others. I mean, and you have a, a lodgings that you pay for. You may as well stock it with stuff. Right. And that was the first thing I wanted to buy, though. The better thieves' tools. They are a masterwork version of the thieves' tool. I think they give you a plus, but these ones aren't masterwork. Right. Of course, if you if you sell enough non-masterwork ones, you should be able to. Uh, were you saying, uh, Kirok, that you want to call in a night? Uh, no, I hadn't. What time is it? 4 a.m. Uh, I'd kind of like to go to bed before everyone in my house wakes up, but that's yeah. like three hours. <laughs> Alright, so we got some time. I wanted to go surfing tomorrow, I was planning to because the waves are exactly at my range, but, uh, you know, now it's, like you said, it's 3.40 for me, and, uh, at this point, and I haven't even eaten yet. So even if we stop right now, it will still take me an hour to get to bed. So I would get to bed at five. So I'm probably not going surfing tomorrow, but that's fine. I'll go some other day. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I remember looking at our streams, last streams, and it looks so bare. Whereas now with all the stuff that you have on, it looks amazing. Uh, we'll wait for Saf to get back. He can read the stuff. He can reply if he has anything. And then you can start taking stuff. I'll tell you how to take stuff. I think you should be able to do it without my help. If somebody now randomly uh, checks her stream, he can see immediately the city, he can see the uh, districts, he can see the cut purse. It's, um, he has the chat log. At the end of the, when, by the time we get to the end of this campaign, the city will have so many locations, so many maps, and all of that will be on the World Anvil. We'll have like underground stuff and overground stuff and, and inns and all these houses and like dozens of NPCs everywhere. It will be insane. And there's a sequel, by the way. They just released the sequel. It's just a standalone adventure, though. It's called Shadows at Sundown. 
and it takes place about a 12 years after the events of this campaign so it takes place in pathfinder second edition in the second season i was gonna make a thread about that in the forum at some point so it's okay i'm back oh you're back all right so read read where they're tired what they're saying in the chat log about the stuff yeah and you know um if you don't have any um objections then people can start taking stuff You could have said, uh, Kerry, you have said, I'll take that armor he's wearing. It's uh, very high quality or something like that. Yeah, I left it vague because I wasn't sure how much I was supposed to know. Yeah. Well, you're, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, masterwork items can be, last time I remember reading it, if somebody knows how to use it, he he's, he knows how to be able to tell that it is a masterwork. It's well, not, I'm it doesn't require any. non masterwork at the minute, so yeah, fine. Yeah. So, uh, well, go ahead. And let's let's try the armor first because nobody else wants that. I don't think. Um, so grab. Uh, I think the ribbon. You grab the blue ribbon and you drop it. Uh, br bring out your inventory. Yeah. And then just drop it in your inventory, and let's see what happens. That's it. Yeah, you just drag and drop it. Simple. Dra yeah, but uh, I wasn't sure if you can drag and drop it to your character portrait. I think I can do this, but I think you can't do it. Let's, the next person, let's try it that way. So, um, West well, Signal, grab the potion and try to drop it in your uh, character portrait. Keep in mind, you drag the items from the ribbon, not from anywhere else. Did that work on your character yeah. portrait? Yeah. That worked on the portrait? Yeah, I just dragged it to the top left. All right, so you can you can drop stuff also in the portrait if you don't want to open your uh, inventory. So just keep drag, uh, you know, as long as you say something, don't don't drag something without saying anything. Uh, you can also say, okay, for example, Kirog, I'm also going to take his thief tools or whatever else you want, but just type it first. Yeah. Hit that. Oh, um, the flasks, did both flasks come with one, uh, uh drag. Yeah, drag twice. Yeah. So I wonder if um Caleb will be able to tell what the stick is I mean I'm guessing it's a sap but do I roll for that or yeah uh it's an alchemical thing so subtype special substances and items Obviously, I'm not supposed to be telling you all these things, but on the other hand, if you can tell at a glance what it is, then uh, I don't know how I would find that. Special substances and items. Let me just probably Google it. Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Special substances and items. Identify. Identify. Okay, Pathfinder. Identify non magical items. Let's see how that works. Okay, there's a question on Reddit. How do you identify non magical items? And it says here appraise. I can do that. 
if you're trying to determine if it's not too exotic, they can just recognize the item. If it's an exotic rare item, then they check for asking an NPC. <laughs> Another guy says they, 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 there's, they have several opinions. Relevant skill. There's no reason the skill weaponsmith should be able to identify any given weapon. Skill armor is similar to skill bar barkeep. Uh, No, no, the way we're going to do this is, for the time being, this is just a wooden stick. Uh, I'm telling you, obviously, it's a cool item, so you may as well take it, because we're in the tutorial stage. You know, in the future, you will just say stick, and if you want, you take it and you figure it out. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to read this thread for next time. And uh, next time, uh, basically what's going to happen with this stuff is that... Uh, we're going to see what sort of professional craft or whatever is the most closely related. Um, and then we'll see if your character has it. Because this is a kind of weapon that a rogue would use, uh, the kind of item that a rogue would use. But does that mean that Caleb automatically knows all the rogue related uh, items? I don't think so. Obviously he knows the thief's tools. Uh, something, but this thing, this thing is not that, uh, not that, um, I'll just have to do some more reading of this. For the time being, somebody just take this, this stick. You might as well take it, uh, Kiro. And... Is it somehow related to the thing Y signal picked up? Uh, no. Let's see, uh, what it says here, this... You should type, uh, Kiro, you should type, uh, I'll take the stick, uh, I think, oh, hold on, let me, let me think how you would phrase it, that it seems to you interesting or weird, or maybe you think you've seen, uh, okay, I'll take the stick, I think I know what it is, uh, something like that, if you can type, and then we can, I think I might know what it is. Okay, take it, and then there's the dagger. Does anybody want the dagger? Well, I thought I'd already taken the dagger. Okay. That's it. Okay, tell me where you go. We were still heading back to Caleb's place, right? And this time, I will remember to do, uh, clear all initiatives. So now the uh, combat tracker reads correctly. I'm dropping you all randomly back in the um, Oh, 
change the uh It's an eventful, it was an eventful day if you think like all the stuff that happened from the beginning. Remember, uh, first you woke up in the hold of the ship, then you healed uh, Addison, then you went out and you saw the riot and all that. Then the freaking uh, crash, the freaking uh, hippogriff rider crashed. And then uh, you had a group of... Uh, of ruffians harassing a nobleman that you saved. Then you had the freaking uh, the madman. Then you did all the ledgers and the identifying. Then you went to Zalaras and you, you you know you got all that stuff. Then you go jump on the way back. And now <laughs> you know it's a long day. So, do we know what kind, like, what time of day it would be? Is it still yeah, like? Yeah, it's it's late in the evening. Okay. I may as well pass it. Uh, I may as well type it. It's late evening. In fact, one more thing, it's been a long day, it's been a long, eventful, uh, hold on, don't type anything else while I type this. We still haven't eaten, by the way, so you can say that uh, we eat Caleb's uh, food and go to sleep. Uh, of course, you can you can have a chat before if you want. The using Zelara's cards is that instantaneous, or does it take effort? Um. I think you just had to hold them to your head, right? Pretty sure it's yeah. I'm pretty sure it's instantaneous, but let me check to be make double double sure. Um, equipment and magic magic items. I think that I think that you can first of all you can read everything I have on that card because it's fully identified. Who has it on his inventory? It's uh. Is it Nicholas? I think, yeah, it's in my inventory. Right, so um, it should say it's the Laras Haro deck. You click on the blue ribbon, and then let me just. Now I shared it with everybody. You can even see its alignment. Yeah, it says it's a move action, so that means it's pretty much instantaneous. In that case, we can do it despite being uh, exhausted, right? Yeah, yeah. After three times a day. So the thing is, identify uh, still has a check. It's not. Let me see. I don't think it's it's perfect. Yeah, I think there's still a there's still a roll. She casts Identify for anyone who holds one of the cards in the deck to his forehead three times a day. So, yeah, it makes sense to not waste to Identify. So I guess Identify is a spellcraft basically, right? Uh, with a plus 10. Let me look at the spellcraft. So the spellcraft is based on intelligence. 
And she only has intelligence 10. Okay, so um, Addison replied, unfortunately not. So let me let me tell you why he's asking. Oh. So the question is, does the ledger, um, because the ledger is basically, you know, he, he de documents his, his crimes. So does he also document every item where it was stolen from? And uh, so we're going to take that answer back. Okay, I was assuming that I got everything that I could get previously. Um, you did get everything you could get, but uh, Dynabook here is probing for more info. And uh, in this case, you know, I've given you everything that the book gives me, right? But um, let's say you wanted to find the owner of every item. It makes sense that you should be able to find at least a few of them from these, uh, you know, if the ledger says that I stole this brooch from, uh, let's forget about the brooch because it's the most weird one. But let's say um, what uh, the, the crown, for example, there's a, there's a gold crown. Or whatever. So if it says that he stole this gold crown from a noble, uh, uh, from a noble's house or whatever, then you would be able to tell from the ledger where it's from, right? So yeah, I mean, uh, I that, that, that makes sense. That's what I thought. But I also thought I just didn't know that I could probe any further into yeah, this. Th this is this is the thing, because, you know, you, you think you're playing a video game and the text that you get, that's all you get. Whereas right. this game, there's, they're trying to make everything, uh, you know, fully realistic, which is where I come in. Like, although I have given you the text that the book gives me, uh, I, you know, I cannot tell you that... I have to make everything seem reasonable and be reasonable. So it's unreasonable to not be able through the ledger to find any of the owners at all. You should be able to find at least some. So that's what. So first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna reply, delete Addison's uh, line about personal, and then uh, I suppose what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a whisper. All right, so right click on this text, uh, copy to the uh, to, to, uh, thingy and then control V. You don't mean to say that? Well, uh, that's what you know from the ledger. So that's, that's the answer, unless you don't want to answer that, unless you want to answer something else. How do we resolve which items we can track down? Like what, uh, how do only we're going to bother with this only if you tell me that you try to track down every item's owner, or if you tell me we try to track down a specific. Uh, if you if you give me one item and you tell me uh, what does the ledger say about this item, then I'm going to figure out some kind of role uh, to see you know if you can tell from the. Um, and then what if you tell me we want to return the item? Then it's, uh, you know, uh, it depends on the item. Like if you tell me I want to return the queen's uh, brooch, well, you have to go to the, you have to go to the, um, to the palace, 
that's obvious, right? But if you tell me I want to return one of the other items for which the uh, uh, the adventure maybe not give, doesn't give me enough uh, evidence, enough uh, info, then I will have to uh, first of all I look at the item, what kind of item it is, then I have to decide where would that item come from. You see what I'm saying? It's a whole thing. It all depends, but all that stuff shouldn't bother you. Like the only thing you should be bothered with is. As a character in this place, what do I want to do with these items? And then once you decide, you tell me and I will tell you how to go about it. But absolutely anything you want to do can be done. the period <laughs> while you have this discussion I'm gonna check how to do the identify again By the way, this um, one of the items says um, Cheliac's coat of arms, gold nugget, nugget. Wasn't that an ingot? Let me see. Inventory. Where is it on your inventory? In the party inventory. No one was carrying it. Who's holding it? Inventory. Oh. Uh... Let's see. It says. Chelyx Gold of Arms Gold Nugget. And you're telling and you're asking me if he was in good in the beginning. No, it yeah, was Nugget. I'm pretty sure it was Nugget, but I, I'm gonna look for you straight in the adventure world so we found it. Because I'd like to appraise that. That's two pounds of gold. Oh, you're right. So the adventure calls it a two pound gold ingot bearing the Chelyx coat of arms. So a gold ingot. But, yes, nugget in the Fantasy Grounds item description. So, we can change it. Uh, but isn't it the same thing in nugget? Is it, no, it's better to stick with the adventure. So, yeah, it's like not structured. Yeah. Chelyx coat of arms, let's see. Gold ingot. Gold nugget ingot. Yeah, I'm gonna change it. Wow, how did you? Oh, I guess you, because you have the notes, right? Ingot.
Right, so for the identify, uh, it's a spellcraft check, 15 DC plus the item's caster level. So, the thing is, uh, oh, hold on, because I do have Zalara as an NPC. So maybe I could roll from her. If you click her. on the thing, it says caster level 10 on the tarot cards. I saw that somewhere. Um, yeah, but um, I see what you're saying. But uh, when I say casters, uh, the DC of the spellcraft depends on the item you're trying to identify. So if you're trying to identify uh, a magic wand, the DC is 15 plus the item's caster level. Not not the Lara's caster, not, not the Harrodex. The Harrodex is already... Um, that's why it was hard to identify, because it was DC 15 plus 10, because his caster level was 10. But uh, the caster level of the Harrodex doesn't have anything to do with the identify. Uh, so let me see, Zalara. The question is, how do I roll the spellcraft? And I think I could roll from Zalara's... Uh, oh, but they don't have her... See, because because you're not going to be fighting Zalara, probably, uh, they haven't given me her stats. So I, I have to, to roll the... the uh... Yeah. How do I roll the spellcraft? That's a question. I just have to roll a... Uh, this, so the spellcraft is intelligence, isn't it? Uh, skills. Spellcraft. Here's intelligence, thanks. And the intelligence of this item is of it's you know it's it's a, it's a magical item. It's an intelligent magical item. Intelligence ten, and I think for ten the the bonus is zero, isn't it? Yeah, so ten is zero. It's not minus one, is it? No. Yeah, for ten is zero. So <laughs> you roll one d twenty. Plus the uh, three times. Okay, so tell me which items you want to identify. It has to be from the, your list of magical items. By the way, um, I suppose you should do you should cast a detect magic again for the um, items you got from the um, casters. I mean, I have, um, I should just be able to do, uh, what's it called? Detect magic. Yeah. On any of these things. So. Yeah, you should. Uh, so I'm pulling out his gear. Um. How do I initiate that? Yep. Yeah. Um. You should type uh, you should type earlier. Um, you should type Okay type everyone put put um, the thieves the put put the card purses items on the desk so I can see if anything's magical, something like that. Everyone, comma, put the, the cut purses uh, items on the table, on the desk, so I can check them for magic. And then nobody else is going to type anything. That's all you're going to type. 
and now uh, open your actions and click to the left of detect magic and then uh, magnifying glass to the right of detect magic keep the magic and then cast okay and then uh, hold on. And then roll knowledge or can. Uh, yeah. Knowledge or can. So you can just, you know, uh, copy paste that. Have we attempted to identify the potion that was on the Sable Company Marine? No, I think we were waiting to get back to the house and then we forgot. Right. right. So, um, tell me the three items. First of all, th this potion can be one of those items. Uh, however, you, look, since you came this far, oh wait, but you don't have any identifiers left. Um, I suppose you could try to identify it without the plus 10 bonus, but... Yeah. Um, let me see how that will work. This is just a normal spellcraft, so you could just roll and use none of the damage spellcraft. Spellcraft. Oh, but identifying potions, I think, is different. Like, you take a little sip, I think. Let me see. The DC of this spellcraft check would be 15 plus the item's caster level. You just wouldn't get the plus 10. Um, but let me see specifically from a identify potion pathfinder. I think that you can try to identify a potion even without... Uh, yes, yes. It says... In addition to the standard methods of identification, you can sample from each container to determine the nature of the liquid with a perception check. The DC is 15 plus. So you don't drink it, you just take a tiny little bit in your tongue. And if you roll uh, perception 15 plus the spell level, 
although it might be higher for air. Yeah, so that's the possibility too. Uh, My spell cross pretty high. Yeah. I'd rather use that. I wonder though if that's going to work. It says in addition. Uh, so, no, the, the standard methods of identification works. All right. So, um, roll spell card. All right, there's no problem there. Uh, so let me look at the inventory. And I, I've sent you the hidden message, and I've also turned the ID on in your inventory. You should be able to see it. So that's done. Uh, no, why should they take it? They they can uh, they can heal themselves. You are the one who can't heal yourself. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So you can just drink it. Somebody okay. else might need to correct me. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. So delete line above. Here, I'll just copy your message. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, you just need to push the language. Uh, you can type, uh, I'll keep it, or you already have it, so. so you can just type nothing, or I'll keep it. Yeah, just type, I'll keep it. Okay. Right. Uh, we're, like I said, we're not going to spend the whole night. Just, uh, just be, Well, you want to use your identify, I suppose, your three identifies, so let's use them. Uh, so somebody tell, Nic Nicholas, has the, Nicholas has the cards, she's going to use the cards. Uh, somebody tell him what items to identify from your, you have lists there, I guess. Um, I think that West Signal has a list of all the magic items. Right. Uh, so he, he, you know, does anybody else have, or I think you can share the list. Anybody can see it from the, uh, let me look at, let me look at the notes. Yeah, click um, Yeah. So, um, West well, Signal has made a, a nice uh, breakdown there of all of Gadriel's loot. But that doesn't say what is magical or what isn't. I think he has another. Yeah, it says Session 8 Magical Auras. Magical Auras. So, what you could do is you could uh, put a parenthesis instead of having two lists. Well, you can transfer. can combine the lists. So for example, I, I can do that for you, for example. Uh, the glass tube containing a type of oil, he's saying that it's magical. So I put in a parenthesis, magical. See what I'm doing? A glass tube containing a type of oil. So why don't you do the rest? Yeah. Uh, the other thing is we have some stuff that's not Gadrons, like the oh. end up having auras, like the Sable. I'm sure that Sable Company Marine thing has okay. an aura. Okay, so you can keep that in the first list. All right. So in the in the magical auras list should only be the stuff that's not Gadrons. This way, you also uh, make sure that you know what the stolen items are. The Harrow deck uh, was stolen. Uh, by Gadrin, but 
you know, Zalara has given to you, so it's yours now. The portion of Cure Light Wounds was found on the, uh, on the, um, you can delete that from your list because you already have it identified in your inventory. Just don't delete anything from Gedrin's uh, list because that's the stolen stuff. You can delete the Harrow deck because you have identified it and you, you have it on your person. Okay, so we can use the item three times. Um, you deleted Gadrian's, um, oh, okay, Gadrian's padded armor, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can use the item three times. So, you have to tell me that, uh, I use the Harrow deck to identify and then list three items. To identify X1, X2, and X3, period, control, enter. Just quickly, um... Some of these items, when we brought them back to the to Kira, to Caleb's place, uh, you like unwrap them as one thing. So, but I I don't know actually know whether they were initially collected. So I don't know if that's a distinct set from stuff like Gadrin's dagger that came off his body, and whether that should be put in a separate head in. Just to be clear. Well, uh, it's like passage. If something says Gadrian's dagger or whatever, that's on his body, and uh, that is loot for you because you killed Gedrin. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, look, everything is loot for you. Everything belongs to you right now because it's yours. But legally, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff is not yours. So if you want to make a legal distinction and the paladin will want to, uh, that's why it's good to keep two lists. Uh, Gadron's dagger and padded armor. You can put that in the other in the other room because that that you know that belongs to you. Uh, cool. It's definitely yours. All right, so uh, yeah, I've got. It makes sense. This is Gadron's loot, not our loot. That's what this list is. Yes, Gadron's loot, and uh, yeah. so. If you wanted to do uh, things a little, uh, I mean, I mean, you you can go now for, you, uh, whatever attracts your interest most, or you can. Uh, keep in mind that, uh, yeah, not everything in Gadriel's loot is magical. For example, the Queen's brooch isn't magical, isn't. Uh, the arrowhead isn't magical. Most of the things actually aren't magical. Uh, so. Yeah, it looks like Y Signal marked the ones that um, had a magical aura. Yeah, I've done that. I'll sort them all to the top. Yeah, you put the magical ones to the top. And they're giving three of those. And let's let's roll the uh, spellcraft from the identifier. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just those three plus the loot from his body. Okay, do I need to roll something? Uh, first, you have to decide what the three items is that you want to identify. Uh, there's only three in the... Um... Oh, there's only three. Right, right. The glass tube and obsidian one. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's got to be okay, me, right? So, Nicholas, the... should type, uh, yeah. I use the uh, Haro deck. Um... So, should I list the three items or just say, like, the magical items from Gadrin's loot? Yes, that's a good way to do it. Uh, I use the Harrow deck. Uh, I'm trying to decide if Harrow deck should be capitalized. Harrow and deck. Um, yeah, let's capitalize it because it's magical or whatever. I use the Harrow deck to identify the magical... Uh, the remaining magical items or the magical items? Um, did were there, any, mean... were there any other magical items from Gadrin's loot that you have already identified? I think. So. Let me see. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what the obsidian wand. Yeah, we already identified the obsidian wand, didn't we? Which so is the wand of magic missile. So, uh, yeah. yeah, the remaining. So you should type, I use the Harrow deck to identify the remaining the magical remaining. items from Gero Group. Um, and then that would be two things. So we could also identify one of the other items we have. Um, maybe the potion? The Sable Company Marine Potion. Yeah, so okay. I'll write that. Instead of faint aura, comma evocation, I made it faint evocation. That's how the that's how the book the books read it. Oh. Right. Uh, I use a hero deck to identify the remaining. All right. So the way we do this is, I just roll. Uh, in the in the order. Okay, I'm gonna roll three d twenties. Wait, is there a no? There's a one. Wait, are you supposed to know? Why not? Let, let's just do it like this for now. Right. So first will be uh, you, you first mentioned the magical item from Gator's loot and the first one is the glass tube so for the glass tube is five so you roll five I don't know why am I rolling shouldn't Nicholas be rolling is his yeah okay fuck it uh delete Okay, just roll uh roll three D twenties separately. Okay. It's the same. Two, okay. So um the first and the third no. Uh, only the only one that you might have uh, is the second one, which is the crystalline vial containing some type of liquid. Who's holding that? Nicholas. Crystalline vial. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I am. It's 15 plus items caster level, so it's 15 plus. I'm afraid you did not identify that either. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you get three chances a day, so eventually it will happen. Eliminate again. I didn't know the magic item using detect magic. Um, Can I still roll spellcraft on them? Because we, Wait, we already I'm, identified the magical aura. I'm trying to think if the Hyro deck gets a plus 10 from the identify. I don't think so. Let me, uh, let me check. Well, actually, you know what? The, the Hyro deck says cast identify. That's what if it says. It should, shouldn't it? It should. If it says, let me look at it again. It doesn't. It doesn't. The the, the hierarchy doesn't roll spellcraft. It casts identify, and that provokes you know the, the roll that entails. She can also cast identify. The identify is italicized, which means the spell. So she casts the spell. 
So that would give her a plus 10, and that might actually uh, do more than more. Um, let me just look at the, uh, real quick, the identify description. Spells, spells, spells. Yeah, so then it's powerful. Otherwise, it'll be kind of uh, kind of a dud. If the other thing is, um, shouldn't we do the spellcraft check? Because the spell, the spell, like that's separate to the spell. Once you've once you've identified the aura, and you know it's magical, then that enables you to use your spellcraft. Ability. You're talking about the hard deck now. Yeah. No. The higher deck is the one that casts uh, the identifier. She uh, does... if, you, if somebody casts identify, do they have to do the spellcraft check? Or can somebody else do the spellcraft check knowing that if they, no. they being told this thing is magical? No, no. It's the same person using the spellcraft check who has to have uh, cast the identify. In this case, it's the Lara is a, the Harrow deck is a living magical item. Uh, like I said, they call it an intelligent item. She casts the identify, she casts the spellcraft. So, okay, why why is Nicholas rolling the die? He's rolling it because it's his item, right. you know. Uh, then would I roll spellcraft then? Because I've got plus five in spellcraft. No, it's her, it's her. Okay, it, that's why that's why it's the, 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 the Lara's item is giving me her intelligence. I know that right. she has intelligence 10. The, right, her, right. So it's the item zero. has intelligence 10. So uh, otherwise, why would he give, be giving me these stats? You know? um, yeah. Does it give you know her ranks in spellcraft? Because it's a skill. Look, Zalara is dead, so I don't have her skills. But she, before she died or after she died or whatever, she turned herself into, uh, she, I guess she fused with her deck. And all I have now are the dex stats. So I get... Uh, if she has intelligence 10, it means she's rolling spellcraft as an intelligence 10 uh, person. Yeah, if you, if you look at the deck Y signal, it doesn't have any skills. It just has stats. Yeah, it doesn't have skills. It's not fully statted. It just has... Can he... Uh, look... I think you can see it, right? If you send anything like that. I think you showed it to all of us. It even has alignment. So... Alignment, chaotic, good. Um, sense is 60 feet. Intelligence, 10. It also has an ego there. I want to check what that ego is though, at some point. Um, wait, let me just post it and uh, make a note. Check. Um, Harrow deck ego uh, attribute. All right. So, uh, all these numbers have to get a plus 10. Oh, so you should have rolled with a plus 10 and the modifier. Right? Yeah, we should roll with plus 10. Let's just do it again. Let's just do it again. So, I'm going to type uh, delete. Delete, uh, delete above rolls. So now, uh, add a plus 10 to the modifier box at the bottom left of the screen, and then roll the d20. Every, every time you roll one, you have to add the plus 10 again. And that's three times, right? Yeah, three times. I have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the list again.
So we have a glass tube containing an eye of oil. Who's carrying that? Uh, we have an item that says oil. I assume that's... Who has that? I think Nilvalor has that. Hmm. No. Magical oil. There's another one that's called magical oil. That's the one. Oh, right. Right. So that is... Oh, that's this uh, my initial loadout. Yeah, he the had just bought oil. some. He had bought some oil. Yeah, so it's just a normal oil. I guess it can burn or whatever. So the first DC is fifteen plus castle level five twenty. You're all twenty eight. So it's an oil of keen edge. Um, I turn it. On. You should be able to see it now. Let me see if you can see it. Let me see it. Yep. However, uh, this explanation doesn't explain to you. Doesn't explain to you what it does. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What does it do? I assume it does applies keen edge, but I don't know what that is. Oil of keen edge. I find it. Is it a spell or something? Mm, let me see. The spell makes a weapon magically keen, improving its ability to deal telling blows. Uh, it, it increases the threat range so that uh, for critical threat range becomes it increases it. Only on piercing or slashing weapons. If cast on okay. arrows or crossbow bolts. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put it on Discord. So check on Discord what Keen Edge is. It's like, uh, you know, Cure Light. Yeah, my Cure Light was. It just does that. Potion of Keen Edge. And it lasts for 10 minutes. 10 minutes per level. Which means this is cast at level 5. It lasts for 50 minutes? Oh my god, it's very expensive. Hold on. Um, don't look at the price. Don't look at the price. Okay, I deleted the price. It's expensive. Um, right. So, that's the first thing. Then you have a crystalline vial containing some type of liquid. Who's holding the crystal in vial? It's, uh, ah, that was Nicholas. Right. Hold on the crystal in vial. So, again, it's 15 plus items caster level. Yeah, it's exactly 20. So, you identified that too. Uh, it's a crystal in vial. So, I'm sending you that. Let me see if you're going to be able to see it. Yes. It's a crystal vial and it contains uh, one dose of silver sheen. And um, what is silver sheen now? It is this. Yeah. 
I have to remove the price from this as well. So, it makes the weapon silver, I guess, if there's vampires or something. I don't know. I don't know. It has to be something for the adventure. I haven't read the whole thing. Silver. Okay. Uh, so, it gives it a silver sheen. Oh, you can put it on, on 20 arrows. Either one melee weapon or on 20 arrows. For one, and it lasts for one hour. And finally, um, so we've identified this, we've identified that. And finally, The um, Ocean Final, the Sable Company Marine. Uh, who has that? I think I have that as well. Yep. Sable, Potion Final Sable Company Marine, alright. Right. And that, uh, you rolled 16, so that would be 15. I think you built that too. Hmm. I need to check in the book real quick. Sable Company Marine Gear. Gear. It tells me here that he had four of these potions. I thought we only grabbed one. I, I didn't know there were four. Oh, wait. It says four in my inventory. That... So you okay. grabbed all of them. I guess, yeah, I guess we did grab all of them. I just forgot. So he had four of them. And yes, you have four of them there. So that's a uh, potion of cure light wounds. It's first level, so that's one caster level one plus fifteen. It's sixteen. It's exactly you rolled exactly uh, what you needed to uh, identify it. So that is a potion of cure light wounds. So now you have four potions of cure light wounds on you. Uh, I just want to type something down now. Um, so Zolara identified everything. So with the help of the deck identifies The glass tube has containing oil of key edge. I think it says it explains here it's one application. Um, the dose. The dose of oil of key edge.
I'll have to wrap up in about 15 minutes, guys. Yeah. Well, uh, we might wrap it up now that you're, you know, you're going to sleep. Uh, I'm not going to sleep. I've just got some uh, work no, I need to I mean, do. Your characters are going to sleep. Oh, our characters are going to sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for you it's morning, and for me and uh, Kirog, is, we're going to sleep. Like, I so, oh, yeah. better than me in real life. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> in the Sable Company Marine. Hold on. So you can now, uh, for example, delete the uh, uh, from your magical lore. So I'm going to do it for you. Ocean found on Sable Company Marine. I'm deleting that. Uh, yeah. So you still have to um, identify the uh, Sable Company's Marine longbow and getter's dagger and armor but that's that's about it that could be about it we still have a shitload of identifying to do at least you know appraise uh, not identify appraise all that stuff has to be appraised yeah we don't know the value of like anything still yeah. and we, i have not rolled for any group of press that will be the first appraise checks in the battlegrounds when we get around and join them that's another thing we got to figure out um, so what about those four, um, pure light wounds, uh, I, uh, potions, maybe you want to spread them around. Yeah, definitely. So that description, is that then everyone knows what? what the items do now or do I need to explain um, there's that? There's an issue that I'm looking at. I'm looking at your sheet now. Uh, your armor says spell fail 35. Does that mean every time you cast a spell there's a 35% chance of you failing? That's a good question. Uh... And how many times have you cast a spell so far? Does that include also the... Um... I think it's just arcane spells. All right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do because there's no there's no way to change anything now anyway. I'm just gonna put a uh, a note in my notes. Check uh, Nicholas's and and I mean since he's your character, you should also check it yourself and tell me. Yeah, I'll uh, check it. Spell fail. Not just the spell fail. There's more. Spell fail skill check like what kinds of skill checks and max that i think the skill check is for stuff like stealth which i think it did apply because i've got minus six yeah. on stealth maybe it does apply um but we don't we're not but i'm not sure check. about the other yeah or I'm not sure about stealth yeah. okay next time make a note so that you you have all this stuff figured out. It's even better if midweek, if you study all this stuff and you put it in Discord. Yeah, I'll do that. That's that's what I'll do. All right. Uh, figure out um, what to do with 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 uh, with um with the potions now. Yep. And that will be the last thing. It still yep. looks on quiet to me. I think you need to rebuild the potty inventory. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wonder if it um, fuses the potions of cure light wounds from the two different sources. Or... Yes, it does.
So it tells you exactly who has them, and now you can spread them out better. Probably two to Addison is the best. You have five, so one person should get two, and that should probably be Addison. He has the fewest. Yeah, years. yeah, I agree. So pass on one to him. I think he should be able to by dragging it to his uh, character portrait. I'm not sure if it's going to work, though. If it doesn't work, then I'll do it for you. So that's from my inventory to his character portrait. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Just grab one from the um, from the ribbon, from the blue ribbon, grab it. Okay. Don't think it did anything. Yeah, it might not. Uh, I want to see if it works for me and not for you. No, it doesn't work. Uh, so the way it's done... One way to do it is you drop it in the party sheet, and then he picks it up from there. But right. But wait, I think the most direct would be uh, for me to just travel. Let me see. Let me try it. Grab it from here. I think this would work. Motion controls. Yep, this will work. I just have to do it. So okay. So now he has two, but these two are not combined for some reason. Uh, and he's in return. That's fine though. Let's leave it like that for now. Um, and then, I suppose, yeah, I'll just open Caleb's now. Inventory. That's it. And move over. Although, honestly, you know, with all the healing stuff you have, why would you also want potions? Are there circumstances where... Why not give three to Addison and two to Caleb? Because... Otherwise, yeah, true, because we can hear us, heal ourselves, I suppose. Um, it was in case we ran out of healing spells, but I, they probably still need them all. I mean... By the time you run out of healing spells, they will have run out, you know, ages ago out of potions. Yeah, true. So if I were you, I would give three to, uh, let's do that. Uh, let me look at your... So you have two left now. There's no reason for you to have any at all. I can't think of any situation. Yeah, it's 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 probably better because I I usually use my healing just to heal them too, anyways, most of the time. So you waste a return that maybe they could have. Yeah. So, I'll have to change what I uh, said then. By the way, Kiro, make sure uh, when you look at your potion of cure light wounds, you have two of them. There's a number two next to them. Just don't don't forget that. And I think I will try to. Let's see why they're not um, they're not adding up in his inventory in my signals. Yeah, they're not adding up because they're slightly different. One of them was found on the Sable Company Marine, so it has a different. Uh, the other two are normal ones. So we're just gonna leave it like this. And you can see in their description which one was found on the Sable on the Marine. And and that's about it. You can just type there that you go to sleep. Did you eat? And you go to sleep. And there's only one bed, so who's gonna take it?
All right, I'm gonna type something. Unless people are out, are you typing anything? No. Um, I suppose, what kind of lighting would they have in there? They would have candles, right? So, you hungrily devour Caleb's food and try to make yourselves comfortable on the bare floor for the night's sleep as Caleb climbs into his bed. And uh, how would you say, you know, you don't say turn off your candles. How do you say um, that you You'd usually say on. blow out or extinguish, right? Okay. As Caleb climbs in... Uh, uh, puts out the candles, right? Puts out the candles and climbs into climb the bed. And I think that, let me look at the, the calendar. Is that the, the, yeah, day one, day two, woke up in the ship house. No, you can see it here. Woke up, uh, made way to kill its lodgings. Okay, I'm going to type some more stuff. It was no drinks. Uh, it was no drinks. And then returned to Zalara's home. Uh, that's it. And we stopped. Uh, at the night of day two, just after they uh, fell asleep. Right, so stop the streams. 